Hello, everybody. If it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer, and that must mean it's time for an early show of Warhammer Weekly. Uh, joining me, as always, is my co-host, Tom. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Hello, friends. Uh, Tom, fresh off the heels. I'm just going to steal it now. Fresh off the heels of a major victory. The winner, the champion of Vault Wars. Way to go, brother. You got best all around. That's what it's called. Yes. It was, it, and indeed, it was the only 5-0. Oh, there you go. Well, that's... So. With with old Night Haunt. And uh, so that'll set us up well to discuss new Night Haunt tonight. Also joining us back again on the show, it's Nico. What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm good. It's an honor to be back for the third time. Uh, really happy to be here. Uh, We're so happy to have you back. I I immediately thought about you because when I we're going to be talking the Night Haunt Battle Tome tonight. We're going to get into the Night Haunt review. We're going to talk about the ins, the outs, the ups, the downs, the goods, the bads, the strategies, the thoughts, so on. But as soon as I read this book, I was like, we got to get Nico. Because, like, I'll just give a quick spoiler for what's going to come up in the Battle Tome review. This is a very Johnny book. Yeah. Like, if you're a Johnny player, our psychographic profile is a Timmy, Johnny, and Spike. This is a super Johnny book in what it allows. So, and Nico, I know you are you are maybe the Johnny of all Johnnies. So, there you go. <laughs> I, I do try, it, though, of course. The real reason is that all, all the other guests were at AOS World, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not true at all. All right. At any rate, uh, let's... Uh... Well, I mean, let's be honest... How many of them have Night Haunt at AOS Worlds right now? So actually, the Night Haunt specialists aren't at AO AOS Worlds. That's a good point. He speaks the truth. Yep. All right. Let's, uh, I don't know why anybody would hear double of anything. That's weird. Okay. Well, somebody tell me if there's still any audio issue. I'll look at that. But it's no, there should not be for any reason any audio duplication. But at any rate, uh, Tom, take us through the news. Okay, cool. Yeah, James sure. said it was his computer. Whew, scared me for a minute. All right. I was going to say, everything on my mixer looked correct. What do we got? Well, how about uh, that rumor engine? Oh, what about that rumor engine that is a 40K thing? Okay, sure. I mean, it could be squat-ish, right? Like, it could be, it, could, it could be a 40K space dwarves KO conversion bit. Sure. Like, look... Nico, I want to get your take on this in a second. But I am happy for Caradron Overlords Wave 2 that they're releasing <laughs> under the banner of squats. Like, as much as that is a joke, it's not a joke. If you want different Arco, those, like, little dudes that they released, the little base dudes or the Necromunda dudes or the, the one we saw one of, those are going to be fine. They're going to have all sorts of wild vehicles that are going to be, like, like the, 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 the trike, the floating grav trike that they spoiled i mean that's an yep. instant gun hauler yeah right so yep <laughs> i mean yep. i still have some faith that this is you know obviously the um prop bag pirate on a squepelin you know flying through the air <laughs> i i think it's inevitable i can't wait you know what i want nico i want there to be a year like just some year that happens I don't know what year this is, where we've caught up with everything. All the books are out. We're not in a new edition year, okay? So, like, they've they've turned the book production up, and it... So, we've caught all the way up. All new books are out. We don't have a new edition coming that year, and their only choice is to release all the wackadoo armies that they've hinted at, like... We get grot bag scuttlers. We get vampires. We just get so every amazing. crazy so thing amazing. in one year because they're out of other options. They're like, we got to give all them the, something. All the concept models that they didn't quite think would reach a whole army, they suddenly get unleashed. So exactly. Ratzer and all that sort of thing. Yeah, you'd get like the clan scryer flying Skaven mm -hmm. in KO stuff. You know, just like every air and sea force that's been teased. Yeah would just all Suffer. come out in a single year. <laughs> It'd be great. Like, to do again, like, Grotbad Scuddlers, you yep. mentioned, right? 
yep. for your gets, and then doing the Skaven, Scryer, like Air Force, yep. Rat, Rat Force One. Well, vampires um, should be taken to the seas, obviously. Vampires, but they can fly too because of boats. Sure, like well, they can fly in ghost boats. Yeah, yeah. we've got yeah, a boat coming today. The night um, boat. Yeah, like, and then we've hit like all of the sub factions, right? I, there's there's that. more. There's a lot more of that kind of wacky stuff they've well, I mean, like, got. The, the, the flying megaliths that the order cities are, are sending off. There. To, yeah. And so you have a new city, and so you have the all Grand. the Grand Alliances represented. Uh, yes, I would also like. And then we'd introduce the silent people as well. Don't forget about the silent oh, yeah. people. Oh, yeah. I remember them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you They're go. They're quiet. They're easy to forget. Uh, oh, we haven't forgotten about Detective Skink, but that's an Underworlds War band. Detective <laughs> Skink and the and the Skink Squad. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Indeed. At any rate, yes. So it's a 40k thing. <laughs> Speaking of new releases, though, we yeah. have the uh, Echoes of Doom box coming. Mm -hmm. That those new that new Skaven model <laughs> uh -huh. can be yours on pre-order this week. Sure. I mean. The look, we live in the worst of all possible worlds, as I've previously yep. discussed. Uh huh. So, um, you know, it's not surprising, uh, that we have one new Skaven model and just in this box, <laughs> two new Sylvaneth sculpts, and with, with more we already know on the way. So, sure, one of the newest, freshest, most aesthetically adored ranges. Uh, that has a ton of new kits. Let's give them more kits. One of the yeah. oldest, outdated, but but deeply beloved factions that's badly in need of kits. Yeah, we get we get a new Deathmaster. When we already got a new Deathmaster five minutes ago in Nether Maze, by the way. So we get two new Deathmasters. And, of course, and we got another one technically before that in uh, Silver Tower. Yes, that's yeah. a good model. Yeah, he's also a good model. Twins. Yep. Yeah, the twins, but it doesn't matter. Like, regardless, he's a Deathmaster. Like, if you look at him, that's what he is. No, I understand. Uh, You're right. They've been doing lots of hero ninja rats. <laughs> it's all right. Our day will come. Our day will come. Indeed. So does this mean that I have to do Skaven for this fall? Uh, not based on this. Might mean you got to do something to pair with Sylvaneth. I don't know. <laughs> Guess we'll see. Are you doing Sylvaneth? I don't know, man. I mean, you know, we'll see what happens. Mm. I'm just saying, I like them mm. Bug Rider dudes. They're pretty cool. Mm. That could be they fun. Tasty. Lots of ally options there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Trees. I like trees. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, what else? Um, oh, and then uh, we have, uh, we've obviously Vault Wars. You mentioned it. Vault Wars was last uh, weekend. Um, it was the inaugural event. It was put on by Metagames uh, Unlimited out in uh, Springfield, Missouri. Um, uh, Tyler uh, Emerson, Tyler Mangle, one of those Tyler guys. Mm -hmm. Never heard um, of him. Never heard of him. Uh, he, I, oh, Scrubby and Wells. There we go. He has. A, he had a wonderful podcast at one point in time. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Tyler co hosted the show put on um, TO'd with Travis and a number of other folks that were there um, out there and they put on a wonderful event. It was it was originally four it was sold out at 40. I think we had one drop before it started. So we had 39. And um, it was just a delightful event. The venue was great. The um, it was like right next to a firehouse subs. Like right next to it and walking like uh, it was right next to like a coffee place as well, like a coffee and smoothie. And so it had like all the things immediately walkable uh, as a venue, in addition to being a nice venue. Um, it uh, and it had like pinball machines lining the game hall area that we were in. It's pretty sweet. So, uh, and uncut sheets of magic cards. An entire revised set was on the wall next to me. Oh, um, cool. Uncut. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. Um, but it was good. It was good. It was a... Uh, uh, I had a wonderful five games, um, played, uh, open with Sons of Behemoth, uh, then did Nurgle Mortals, then did Ideneth, then did Nurgle he a Beast Heavy, and then did, did LRL. So, uh, it was a two-list format, um, that I appreciated. It was, 
but it was different than David's two list format at Nashcon in that it was yeah, a little more of a sideboardish format. Yeah, it was. It was sixteen hundred points fixed, and then you could swap out. Your second list could have four hundred points different. So it was a very limited kind of two list format. Um, yeah, it was great. It was great. It was a great event. Uh, it's definitely one that uh, would be worth going back to. Um, I look forward to see uh, seeing what kind of what they do next. So. Okay. I hope to make it out next year when I when I don't have a random conflict the week before where I'm in a different country. <laughs> so the details. Yeah, indeed. Uh, no, it's great. Uh, we do have to also say the other important critical piece of news that came out of it is, of course, Brendan, who took home the uh, underdog trophy and beat his rival two plus tough, who in a very close game that went to the wire. Unfortunately, the pigs. We're not able to. Uh, we're not able to take out the trees. Uh, now it's true that he did take the underdog award, but as I have, I, I was want to remind him repeatedly. I also qualified for both the underdog and hard mode with my army. Uh-huh. So technically, that's my trophy. He's just keeping it warm. I'll remember that for your best painted sword. Um. <laughs> Touché. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, enough of this. Uh, let's get to some pick of the week. Nico, what do you want to share with everybody? Oh, I had a, I had a couple, please. So you did. First of all, I had um, Heyway Twitch did a sort of hot take review based off the leaks of uh, of Night Haunt. Really enjoyable. Very really thoughtful um, commentary. And then for the second one, uh, going from four hours to four minutes, uh, we have the Age of Sigmar for Beginners video on the mm. T-Sports network that uh, Rob Symes put out, which is rather amusing. Very nice. They are both linked below. So whether you're looking for some quick, short entertainment or maybe a video to share with why OS is cool, or you want to get deep into Halo's take on it, uh, both of those are linked down there. Tom, what would you like to share with everybody? Um, I, so you mentioned, uh, Brennan's victory over Doug, the defeat of the bone splitters by the trees. And so I'm going to actually, uh, spruik the, um, I'm going to go one step farther and spruik Doug's video. So we had heard about Doug's challenge video. Yeah. His, the campaign, uh, kind of challenge video that he did leading up the prior week. But what you may not know is that he made a um, a follow up video, acknowledging and announcing the defeat, the uh, the inability of Wurgog to uh, to keep his promises. So that happened, um, and it's a very delightful, humorous two minute video that Doug put on, and I want to encourage you to check that out. He also did a special on Night Haunt, um, but. I'm, I'm stealing my the, pick. Uh, That's my pick. Oh, was it? Oh. Yes. So while you're on Doug's channel, check out if you want more Night Hunt content, he also goes through the book. Uh, Doug doesn't get every fact right, but that's okay. <laughs> it's, I still agree with his overall points. He's he's that. absolutely right that. in the book. And I one of the things I appreciate about Doug, and he says this very openly in the in his show, is that he's always approaching it from the point of view of a new player. And so if you're somebody who's uh, more casual, more newer, and thinking about getting into Night Haunt, I think he makes a lot of really good points about stuff that you're going to find enjoyable and stuff that you might find challenging in the army. Because it is a Johnny-ish book, meaning like a that it, it trades on player skill being quite rewarding and involving a lot of like list tech and stuff like that to really extract the most value from the book, as you'll see. Um, then... Uh, you know, there can be some challenges, and I think he's pretty clear on that stuff, which I like. So, check those out. Uh, very mm. good. All right. Well, gentlemen, what, uh, what have you been working on? Nico, you've been you've been doing any hobby? What's What's been on your hobby desk, my man? Uh, quite a few armies. I've just finished off uh, Deepkin. I've uh, been building up uh, Iron Jaws with Kragnos. It's been really fun. Uh, and I have just been acquiring <laughs> Nighthawk models like mad to add to the existing ones. So like, you know, 50 Harridans, 50 Blade Guide for Revers- Revenants, and like 70-odd Chain Rasps. So uh, yeah, plus the heroes. So yeah, that's sort of polishing them up. So getting them ready to paint. So 
Nice. So you're you're ready to go with any list. That is what we're going to talk through. Like you are just you're ready to hit the table with all the spoopy boys, no matter what the the situation is. What I'm yeah, like at least three of them. I think there's probably like five five or so styles you could do. I'm not doing the hex race, but I'm trying the all three of the others. Nice, nice. I love it. Tom, what have you been? Did you have you got any hobby since you got back? I, I have. I wasn't home 24 hours. So one of the models that I pulled in the raffle um, in my, uh, at Ball Wars was actually Kurdos. Um, and so I wasn't home 24 hours before I was building models again. Um, and so actually it was 12 hours after I got home. I had gotten up and started building Kurdos. And so this is what's on my current table. If you can see this or not. Oh, no, nope, it's all breaking. <laughs> um so ghosts. it's the it is a lot of ghosts. So I have uh, next month I have uh, Atlantic City Open coming up, um, and then I have a Meltdown in July, Midwest Meltdown, and then I have Nova in August or not Nova. I have NashCon in August two weeks later than Nova. Yep, it being in September. So. I say all that to say uh, I have a pretty fixed idea of what I'm going to take. Uh, I'm definitely going to take Ghosts at this point um, because place my play style from this weekend, I should be able to mimic it pretty closely with the new uh, armies. And so I'm uh, I'm excited to, um, to, to give that a try. And so I don't have to paint a whole lot more. Um, but I'm getting to do my Grim Ghasts. Uh, you, you get to take a free night, uh, a free warband from Underworlds to Midwest Meltdown. And nice. so I'm um, paint, painting up the, the ghosts for that. Uh, so yeah, it'll be fun. Awesome. Very good. Uh, I am putting the finishing touches on the Nether Maze. Speaking of, of Skaven, the, the Nether Maze Skaven. This is the last guy I have to work on, the actual leader. I saved him for last. I've got uh, Jumpy Boy all done. This jumpy boy on his little smoke cloud. The rest of them are all done. And I got, of course, all of my assassins. I always put them in all white, never in all black. Because, look, Snake Eyes was cool, but Storm Shadow was cooler. If you're a ninja and you wear all white, that says something about how deadly you are. Okay? You yeah, know, totally. So, I mean, Storm Shadow just sealed that for us. That's what I'm saying. So, yep, just finish him up. All that's left to do on him is his base. Uh, but yeah, uh, these guys are, are fun. Um, they're very different, uh, Skaven in, in how they're sculpted. Um, some of the things are a little more challenging on them. Like the fur, you know, like they have fur obviously, right. In certain patches, patchy places. And on the old Skaven models, it's relatively well-defined where that fur is and kind of easy to pick out. Now that they're sculpted digitally and they can be like super duper 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 fine with that fur, it's like a little too small to actually render exactly correctly. Uh, once you're like, once you've put any kind of paint over it, you're like, wait, where's the fur? It just disappeared because it's so small. So, but they're cool. Um, so got those all. I'll finish those up here real soon. Uh, and then, then that's, then I'll go back to having every unit for Skaven painted so nice that's that's the that's always the goal i gotta stay current gotta have every unit ready to go uh okay uh as we transition into our main topic here uh i'm gonna say hey guess what folks uh hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already do those fun things share it click buttons they're fun just like it says up there in the corner buttons are fun uh so uh don't forget to hit that and share it. It really helps the channel and helps other people find it, which we really appreciate. And it costs zero dollars, which is awesome. Okay, gentlemen, shall we talk about Night Haunt 2022? Um, before I flip to my summary screen and make my points, I actually want to let both of you expound about your 40,000 foot high level view of this book. So, Nico, hit us with your high-level thoughts. What, what's your what's your high-level view on this book? Okay, yeah, I've got a few, a few points here. So they've essentially taken a D-tier army that was almost spectacularly ill-suited to the monster meta that we had uh, and reinvented it through some really good battle traits, 
some streamlined but still targeted war scrolls that really do a job. And they produce what is probably an A-tier army. Uh, I think it sits alongside the likes of Iron Jaws, Nurgle, Fire Slayers, Deepkin. Um, and it has, you know, choice of distinctive play styles that, you know, hit the narrative really well. Um, has, there is a downside, it has resurrected one particular play style, which is fairly misery inducing. Um, and that could probably have stayed in the coffin. But, you know, the other three or four play styles are, are really solid and interesting. So there's, there's lots to, to do there. Um, it leans into MSU in a way that we really haven't seen uh, for a melee army, uh, probably more than any other book, which is fantastic. Uh, it's a relief because ultimately you're dealing with you know only one new, one sort of combat unit of multiple models that's got a two inch reach and only one unit's on a 25 mil base. So if you're trying to you know operate with you know big blocks. You know you're going to have serious coherency issues if you don't have the ability to fight in an MSU style. So that really helps. Um, what I would say is that some of the play styles do encourage um, sort of spam of like the primary sort of unit that you're taking alongside some sort of tech pieces and heroes. Um, and that while in some respects that's bad, perhaps for you know, be you know, beginning players, and this is, it was you know, in version two, an army that was aimed at beginners, um, you know, operating with a reduced selection of war scrolls is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Might be just, mm -hmm. just what you want for a beginner's army. You can... Yep. Pick whichever one of the, of the three or four models that you particularly like. Take forty or fifty of those. Take the heroes heroes that you like, like the war scrolls of, or like the models of, and you've got a you know solid army. So those yeah, are my I, thoughts. I think I, I I agree with all of that. Tom, what about you? Yeah, I mean, so what I would say is that I uh, I really am excited about it as an army. Um, I have a couple concerns and not the standard concerns that one might have, right? Um, <clears throat> one is the potential for just extreme MPE experience sure. for Timmy players. Um, because what is essentially true about this army is that Imagine almost any buff that can be debuff that can be found in all of Age of Sigmar. And this army has reach into it. Sure. So penalties to hit, penalties to wound, penalties to save in robust yeah, yeah. numbers. Um yeah. attack. Uh, reduction of damage. Sure. Always strikes last. Attacks, ASL. Uh yeah. stealing action points, messing with other people's action point economy. Um, all of it is on oh, oh, command points. I'm sorry. Yeah, command points. All of it is here is the point. Yeah. Um, and so for some people, especially like Timmy style players, this could be a real frustrating army to play because it's a lot of like, you don't get to play your army. You know, no retreat, right? Like a lot of things that are just bad experiences this army has in profusion. Like that's what it's doing. Um, the other thing that I, that's on the experience of the army on the other side of the table. On... As playing the army, one concern that I have is uh, it's, um, you know, many armies that I would run for Night Haunt would easily have between 70 and 100 models. Like that was just a very real number that I used to, you know, like to have in field. And the reality is, is that um, because this whole army is uh, retreat and charge, every model is retreat and charge, and because the entire mechanic revolves around charging, like, in order for you to have a functional mechanic, you need to charge every turn with most models. Not everything, but most things. Um, and what the consequence of that is, is that you may have to literally touch your entire army three times. Once to retreat it, to move back to retreat, once to recharge, and then to pile in. Sure. Um, and so, like, you could feasibly be touching three, moving 300 model, like 300 model moves per turn. Um, and so it's just, there's like, um, it is going to, it could be a problem for some forces. That's what I'll say. Sure. Okay. Uh, but that said, overall, I love it. And I have a lot of hopes for it. And it's something that I'm going to play for, for probably a while. Yeah. Here's my summary. 
Um, I think it's an extremely variable army, as Nico, you already mentioned. You know, it's got a strong internal balance and multiple paths to victory. You know, we've already mentioned some of the tension in the book between like MSU versus some horde type options. It'll be interesting to see how that evolves, by the way, as we go into hashtag horde meta on the new GHB and sort of what those kinds of incentives look like. Um, and does the does the the build become like a single horde with you know a lot of MSU floating around it and stuff like that? We'll we'll see. Um, most units and heroes have some interesting angle or reason to be played, though there are misses in the book. We'll we'll discuss the misses. Like there are some that you read and you're like, nah, skip. <laughs> like just <laughs> didn't quite get there. But I will say that that's not super common. A, a lot of these you could see putting in an army, and I think it's it's pretty strong on its internal balance. Um, it does read as though MSU is the favored path, but it doesn't have to be the only path. I already mentioned it many times, but it is a very Johnny book. Um, it is absolutely a toolbox army. It has a lot of different sort of things you can keep in your pocket, ready for whatever opponent you might uh, meet. I agree with you on the potential for some of the MPE, although we'll talk through that and how that balances out. Mm-hmm. Because it's interesting in that the NP is not completely, but a lot of it is restricted to your turn. Uh, right. And like on the yeah, opponent's turn, they aren't nearly as subject to it, potentially. A lot on... Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I will say one of the interesting sides of that is that as a melee army, this actually is our, this army is actually quite susceptible to the double turn. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like they have a, yep. they have a double turn Achilles heel. So you really have to, like the, the your your five P's serves you well here. Prior planning prevents poor performance, right? Um, you want to make sure you can absorb the double if it happens. If you're in if you're in that kind of position. So, okay. So that's our summary for everything. All right. Let's get into some deets, shall we? Okay. Deets. All right. I'm gonna timestamp us here. Uh, let's talk about the allegiance abilities. The basic ones. And this is where I want to make my first point. They have a ton of allegiance abilities. Just (laughs) all of them. Just so many. Now, I think that is largely because most of their units are still bad. All right? Like, by the standards, if you look at what you get out of other armies, the actual pound-for-pound, you know, point-for-point, punch-per-point... Right, something like Stormcast or or Iron Jaws or something like that gets a lot more out of their individual model. Right, they are crappier units than let's call it the average in the game. Just like I mean, taken as the War Scroll alone. Right, if you were to literally just read the War Scroll. Yeah, like if you're allying them in, if you're pulling them in yeah. the other armies. Yeah, yeah, these are pretty terrible allies in most cases. Not all, but most. Um, you know, you know what the benefit is at least they can receive uh, save buffs in other armies because <laughs> they're not ethereal in other armies. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that is funny. <laughs> um, that's that's yeah. uh, that's both a funny thing and uh, the ghost joins up with the the other people and they're like, "We're good now, guys. We can be in again." <laughs> they join up. They they're like, "Mystic solidify." Woo! Yeah, exactly. Yes, that is a very funny side effect, but like. The nature of their allegiance abilities are almost not their allegiance abilities bring them up. Many of their allegiance abilities are like, we're going to bring you down to sure, us. Sure. Like, <laughs> you we're have to pretty play crappy. our terrible game. <laughs> right. We're pretty crappy. I'm going to make you crappy. And then let's see who wins if we're both crappy. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you just became crappy, but I was born in it, molded by it. <laughs> I've been a crappy war scroll for my entire existence, Batman. Right? That's Thanks kind of what that. they're doing. So, yeah. all right. Cool beans. Let's get into the individual stuff. They have legions, processions, whatever, sub-factions. We'll get to them in a minute. Uh, Aura of Dread. This is a really funny ability. Okay. Um, enemy units are terrified while they're within three inches of any night haunt units. While a unit is terrified, it cannot issue or receive the inspiring presence command. Has no effect on other ghosts. So in the mirror match, you can't stop other ghosts from inspiring presence. Other ghosts are not scared by your ghosts. Checks out. Aside from the, uh, the obvious, like, ludonarrative dissonance of this, of, like, who would be legitimately scared of ghosts in this world? 
of of like demigods and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, nah, nah, dog. That mountain is walking and eating whole cities. <laughs> That's scary. You're just some dude who's dead. I got this. But aside from that particular piece of Ludo narrative dissonance, like I I enjoy the idea of chaos demons. Who live within the madness-inducing wastes, seeing a ghost and being like, oh my! <laughs> um, but anyways. Uh, it's a really powerful ability. Uh, yeah. Because it's also going to be where some of their damage comes from, potentially. And other things trigger off of being terrified. We'll talk about this later. But some of their damage can clearly come from the fact that everybody's basically rolling Battleshock tests unless they have other non-inspiring presence uh immunities right yeah which, like the which uh, are rare. yeah, yeah which like, are pretty it, rare. it is and they're getting rarer right yeah. because like uh like the screaming bell just lost theirs right um no they didn't they still did the screaming no, bell keep theirs in their i can't new comment box. on that tom oh sorry <laughs> i don't sorry i was uh, nico i was invoking the leaks i don't know whether i th- i thought that i i read in the whatsapp chat that they lost it so um, but regardless, uh, uh, yeah, it seems like, you know, like, uh, Daughters of Cain still have a little bit here or there, which with Witch Brew, I think. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's there. LRL has it with the Cathalars. Um, yeah. But it is few and far in between. Yeah, that came into play, actually, uh, this last weekend because I got a game in. Uh, and there was some night haunt. It was a multiplayer game, and I and the night haunt player went after the the LRL. the LRL player and was like, "No, no, you can't inspiring presence." And the LRL player was like, "I steal their no, 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 no." This is not it. And uh, uh, I got so okay. many dumb abilities. You don't even know, son. A double zombie of the of Luminous and uh, night haunt would be quite scary. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, so I, it's a cool ability. It's very potent. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's, it's, it's nice. It's a good start. One of the interesting things is because of what we're about to read in the next ability, you may sometimes find that your triggers aren't always in place correctly when you want them to be. So like, you've got to think about what I mean is you mentioned the retreat and charge, which is in ethereal. We're about to get to it. Right. Right. And cause the whole army has ethereal. Let's just, just get it out there. Ethereal is everybody's got a war to six up. Good. We don't need a hero around to be a ghost anymore. So that's nice quality of life yeah absolutely just such a quality of life improvement i appreciate uh, it so yeah. deeply it's 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 always ridiculous that ghosts suddenly did work ghosts anymore because there wasn't a hero around to inspire them whatever anyway there was a moment there's the moment where my black coach got stuck in like i had to push push onto an objective and i put you know i, I extended push deep in their line and then he went at me with plague bearers and i was like i'm good oh Right. Like because I was like, yeah, I don't have my ward save anymore, so I'm on, I'm, I'm just on a four up unrendable. Womp, womp, womp. So they got a ward of six up. They can army wide retreat and charge and old ethereal. No, 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 no modifiers, positive or negative. Right. Okay. Right. Now the thing that's interesting about that retreat and charge is it can sometimes non bow with terrified in certain ways. Because if you pull like you pull all your units out in the movement phase, that means yep. you're not in combat anymore with them. <laughs> They're not terrified at that exact moment. So depending on when you're trying to trigger things, which this can yep. sometimes come up, if you're trying to like trigger something in the shooting phase, for example, and there's a couple instances of this, and you retreated everybody out, it's like They're not well, terrified anymore. no one's terrified anymore because you left. <laughs> Right. So you got to yeah, think this, about the interactions there. This goes back when I said you you want to retreat most of the time. <laughs> you might want to leave one sort of token, you know, ninety five point unit still in combat, and not least because you also want to stop the enemy redeploying five or That's six. That's what I was going to say. That's you. exactly right. And if you're pulling your back. charges are ugh, not three inches anymore. Yep, exactly. It's the other thing you got to think about. You're you're exactly right, and that's why I think the the second layer of this is I think that you're always going to see some MSU component of this, even in a hoardier build, or at least some heroes that can perform that role, like cheaper heroes that can perform that role, who can corner tag and just stick around and and yeah. stay there and hold people while the other units pull out. Not only to keep units terrified, but yes, you just hit the nail on the head, Nico, to stop the redeploy, right? Because you right. walk away and they walk away from you. <laughs> it's like, oh, that, now all of a sudden we're nine inches apart. That said, 
Um, the reality is, is that uh, they increased the movement on basically all the War Scrolls. Yeah. Like before, that like Pendant of the Foul Wind was this plus three movement bubble. Well, they just gave two inches to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Like the whole army is eight. And so the actually the good news about that is that when you retreat because you're flying, you can fly over them and sandwich them between your two units. So there's nowhere for them to redeploy out of. Sometimes like, so depending smart, on the particular smart unit Johnny so players, so you know, will be able to like control the redeploy. Sure. But that Absolutely. said, it'll yeah. Uh it could be ugly. Yep. It it'll it oftentimes you can get behind them assuming they're not in a formation where that's obviously impossible right. or something. Right. Yes. It's but you're absolutely right. It's a possibility. Another, another quick one is the I think it's a start of start of movement phase teleport unusually. Uh, I think it's all rack that you could potentially like teleport behind a mega gargan to stop it redeploying very far. Right. 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 Yep. Oh, we're gonna talk about him. We're gonna talk about the boatman. Right. Absolutely. Because he is a he is an interesting dude. I like the boatman. Uh I'm happy with him. Uh, Discorporate is our next allegiance ability, and it's called "Sorry, you didn't get all-out defense." Here's a better ability. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, here is your faction-specific yeah. all-out defense. Congratulations. Now, so good. It, it is so good. Um, the important part, okay, is the wording here. You can use this command ability when a friendly night haunt unit is picked as the target of an attack in the shooting or combat phase, so just like all-out defense. But that unit must receive the command. That unit has a ward of 5+, plus instead of 6+, plus until the end of that phase. The key here being is that there are some units in this book that just have their own built-in ward saves, mm -hmm, often mm -hmm. being higher than, you know, being already at base 5 up or higher. You can't discorporate that up another point. It doesn't work like no. that. Because uh, you can't include Nagash, and Nagash bumps it down a point. Sure. This is a flat plus one to ward saves. So, yes. uh, so what's her face? Olander can sit on a three up ward. I mean, I think that sounds like a terrible Deep army. <laughs> <laughs> Details. Details. <laughs> but yes, it is doable. Uh, all right. The big news, and I'm curious to get both of your takes on this because this is a this is a, there's a lot to this ability. Wave of Terror, basically our replacement for our old school uh, roulette wheel of just like, bzzz, do we, or, or whatever the, your little, what are these things called? A slot little, machine. Slot machine, thank you. That's what I was trying to think yeah. of. Yeah, your little slot machine, yep. right? Okay. Yep. So, uh, after a friendly Nighthawk unit finishes a charge move, you can look at the unmodified charge roll. For that charging unit wave of terror table, pick one enemy unit within one inch of that night haunt unit, and then apply the relevant effect from that table to that enemy unit. If you prefer, you can go lower, um, which is good because if you happen to nail multiple ten plus charges, you you're never you don't need to make them fight last twice generally. So okay, great. You're oftentimes going to fall into you're going to want to fall down into neg one to save or something like that. Um, so you can always pick a lower effect, and these effects are all cumulative which this is a big incentive towards MSU building, right? Where, Ooh. because you yeah. want to be stacking, multi-charging, two, three units charging into something pretty regularly. Uh, on your min charge, which is three inches, nothing happens. On effectively right. any other number, uh, you're getting something, right? You're getting either neg one to hit, neg one to save, or applying the strike last effect to the unit. And yes, as you as, as, and as I said, these do all stack. So if you happen to nail, like I did watch this happen during that game, where three units charged and three units rolled an eight, <laughs> that happens. <laughs> and suddenly it was like that unit was neg three to save. It was like, whoa, hello. Uh, that's a big old penalty. Yep. yep. So a anywho, um, the it should be noted, by the way, that the other important point to drop down is you might not need to always negative the save. Sometimes the negative to hit could be more effective to stack just to stop them from all out attacking out of it. So for example, like if you're charging into things that already have a very low save and you have, there's, there's things like neg one rend in this army. Um, if you're charging into other ethereal things or the things that yep. don't modify their save, right? That can't get positives or negatives. There's no reason to apply that status effect. So you might as well drop to the negative to hit and just stack it up so they can, so they're buried under the, the locked neg one, that kind of thing. So, yep. all right. Nico, what's your take on this on this table? 
Yeah, I love it. This is it's another game changer. It really synchronizes well with the retreat and charge. So you've got the opportunity to do this in you know, essentially all your turns, potentially, if you're close enough. Uh, as you say, it's kind of like they've gone from the roulette wheel to the blackjack table. It's a bit more control, but it still is a gambling element. Right. Uh, you know, sometimes you're going to roll that three and charge. You might think, well, maybe I'll re-roll it. And then maybe you roll the double one. But um, hopefully you get a you know, nice tasty eight or a ten. Um, you know, as previously, it was sort of one in six chance for the ten up to get the big effect. It's kind of a wash between the, the old effect was like you fight in the charge, like you fight immediately. Uh, so you're in mm. the charge phase, so like all that defense wasn't working, and like, but also all that attack wasn't working, and you know various other buffs and shields and things probably weren't working either. So that was a bit messy. So I think they really by just making the strike last on the opponent, it, it's cleaned it up. Again, it, it, this army is much better at dealing with a small number of like dragon units or, or gargants or the like. It doesn't want to be playing against another MSU army because it can't like focus fire and have like five units on one uh, to try and stack these buffs up and, de and debuff them. If you're sort of putting you know, a minus one hit on a five-man enemy unit, they're not going to care that much. Right. The other point I, I sort of wanted to hone in on is they're within an inch, so it's not within three inches. So yeah. if you're trying to attack something like protectors sitting behind vindictors or, oh, I dread, uh, hang on, maybe not, maybe in version two, I was going to say storm vermin behind clan rats, but maybe, you know, thralls behind some <laughs> other chaff unit, yeah. um, you are going to be unable to debuff that, that unit that's behind the outer screen and then potentially, you know, you can crush the outer screen, but then you're going to be within three inches of the, the hammer, and then you're in trouble, potentially. So, again, sort of mixed-armed castle armies, you may not be so happy. Yeah, I think that's all exactly right. The other thing I would point out is, I think a lot of people read this and see the, that, like, they're like, wow, these are some really powerful effects. And, like, yeah, they are. I, I, they They are. <laughs> they're good. The trick is they're only applying in that following combat phase. It's yep. going to tick over to the enemy's turn potentially and all of these things go Drop away. Off. And that that enemy unit, I mean, barring a couple, there are some effects that we'll talk about, obviously like sure. spells and other debuffs that yep. we'll talk about that can ride and that could still be a, a, you know present. But like this stuff is gone and when it rolls to the enemy's turn, as I mentioned, they're going to start fighting like they fight again. Uh, and so, you know, depending on what's left, if they're able to sort of absorb that, uh, um, yeah. yep. you know, again, just to go back to the Lumineth, because it's an easy example, right? If they come in and you attack them and yeah, you get some good penalties on them, but they drop a penny and they all out defense and they have the protection of techless up or whatever. Right. And you cause just relatively few casualties or problems and then that unit of warden spins around to its turn and puts up its sun metal weapons. It's just going to be like, well, time to kill some ghosts. <laughs> just, it just hack through you. Right. So Definitely. that kind of stuff you have to be wary of. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I agree. What I would say is I still think that the, I think you're underselling how defensive some of these buffs are. Because some of it will be very reliable. And what I mean sure. by that is like the 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 bonus on the ward save, um, and even like there's a number of like ways to perma ha like hand out like negatives to wound and stuff like that. Agreed. Um, I agree. Yeah, I don't I don't want to overstate it. You're right. Yeah. Uh, there, but it, but that that depends on how you build your list tech, right? When we get to that kind certainly. of certainly, certainly, certainly. Uh, yes. Yeah, so right now, I wish I was Haywo and I just had the Bustin uh, thing that he's that he's got on on loop. Uh, but no, no, no such excellent stream deck for me. Um, okay. So now let's talk about truly my favorite rule written in this entire book, bar none. Okay. This next rule is my favorite rule they've written in this book, maybe in any book so far, second only to disease. The disease. I knew you were going to say that. Yep. Yep. Because yet again, we splitting the baby. We figured out how to fix the problem. Mortal wounds on sixes are too effective. They are about mathematically four times more effective than a regular wound, which is too much. <laughs> That's too much. That's too good, and it creates an efficiency slash scalability problem. 
So instead here, they've got Frightful Touch, where if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made by a friendly Night Hunt unit is six, that attack wounds the target automatically. And I will say, man, this actually feels really good. Like, I watched the, the, the player play this, and they would just, like, roll out attacks and be like, oh, cool, these are all auto wounds. And they would just set them aside and then roll for their wounds and then add to the pile, right? But they just yeah. felt so good skipping that wound roll step because... And it, speed, and it speeds things up. It speeds things up, yeah. Yes. It's faster. It, you roll less dice, and it's still a good roll. Like, it's powerful, but not broken good. Yeah. This oh, yeah. is great. I was going to say, I think they borrowed this from, from 40k. There's a couple of examples there. And like, obviously, there's the sort of elf keyword version. The Eldar version is like sixes count as a six to wound, and then the six to wound could also trigger something, but this isn't quite that powerful. But yeah, it's as you say, it's a lot quicker. The other interesting thing is that in 40k, particularly, sometimes you are wounding on fives and sixes because you're trying to smash a knight with a las gun or a bolter or something. Uh, and then every one of those sixes is worth three or six uh, wound rolls, effectively, right. because right. one and six yeah. you know, go through. So here it really rewards things like uh, chain rasps that are only yep. winning on fours. It's a bit less good for your elites and your heroes and stuff that might be winning on twos or threes. It's also really nice for the. Th this is here's a here's a very funny small corner case that I that I that I found. There's a lot of weird units that have sort of incidental shooting attacks. Yeah, not yeah. have like one shooting yeah. attack. That's so true. Yeah, yeah. And the more any any time I see a shooting profile that says one attack, I'm like worthless, immediately yeah. worthless. This will never do anything. Okay. I say that. But now. But uh, but I did blow up a whole lot of ghosts with a with a a, a bomb from a warlock bombardier. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> Just blew the heck out of a unit of grim gas reapers. Anyways, then that's a single shooting attack. But the point is, is that the chance that you've got it, the fact that you got a sixteen percent chance to skip one of your failure conditions in that single attack, actually makes those single things slightly more uh, effective. Um, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. What would a Lariel pay for that? Oh my god, yeah, right? <laughs> How many times have you had a shooting attack that's on like twos and threes or threes and twos and you're like, and hit and nope. <laughs> I watched Techless with his like sel Selenar Blast yeah. and he was like, oh, here we go. I'm going to wipe out some ghosts. And he's like, one. Right, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, so I I like, I, I love this rule. I think it's great. Um, and I'm excited about how well balanced it is and how cool it is for the army. And just, it's, it is just a great piece of design and it makes me so happy. Yep. Um, yep. and then finally vanishing phantasms, which is just the new way they're doing their deploy half your army in ambush. Only this time yep. it's now limited to three friendly units because they knew if they were encouraging MSU, they didn't want you to be able to put like 50 units up in the, <laughs> up in the heavens. Right. 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 Um, well, but I mean, and they there there would be times before, I mean, you were joking around about my, about my list last week, right? Sure. But I was 13 and 14 drops. Yeah, yeah. And so you know what I can assure you is that if anybody was under five drops, they never, none of my real army was ever deployed before somebody was fully deployed. Yeah, Every sure. single game. Well, and the nice part about this is this does, it is being able to remove three and then put yeah. them in the heavens is actually yeah. better than having to just as you're deploying, put three yeah, in because yeah, you get to fine. see the yeah. whole state of what's been done and then pick up three key units. Yeah, you can faint. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So it's just a much more potent ability to be able to be like, ah, not Agreed. gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Yep. Okay. So all in all, I think allegiance abilities good, flavorful, <laughs> powerful, but not broken. Yep. Interesting ways they work. Yeah. Like A plus work. Love them. Cool. Let's yeah. talk about command. Uh, oh, yeah. I love all of it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just great. Let's talk uh, command. The only, Oops, sorry. The Go only ahead. miss, you didn't mention processions, like just at generically, like they have well, some factions called professions. We're gonna get there. Uh, well, uh, I, we need to pour one out for Reichnor's Condemned because <laughs> it's gone now. I understand. Like Reichnor, Reichnor's been demoted. Like he sure. was, he was the hotness, and now he he's not even anybody of significance anymore. Now nah, you know you know. Is he the keyword of a different one now? Say what? 
Has he got like, the keyword of a different one now? I'm just checking. yeah, I think so. Uh, I'll have to pull it up real quick. He's or, grieving. Yeah, he's grieving. I think. Yeah, which it's just it's nonsensical, but whatever. Um, because he used to be able to count as a general and all that, and just just got robbed. Sorry, Ragnar. Shame for him. Okay, we can. Okay. Move on. Now we're not going to cover. I'm not going to cover all the command traits and artifacts as always because I don't want to be here for all time. So instead, we're going to do our standard game here. Of Nico, what is your pick out of this lot for the command traits? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that. Uh, can I say Master of Magic? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's that's yes, absolutely a valid answer. But sadly, this is probably one of the weakest points of the book. Uh, cloaked in shadow is interesting, but I would rather it was like a buff that you like a spell that you put on one of your own like big melee units rather than on a you know five or six wound foot hero. Yep. Um, yeah, there's a lot of situation or a lot of matchup dependent, unfortunately. But you know the rest of the book more than makes up for it. But it's it's not one of the strong points as far as I can see. Yep. I, Tom, you got any picks you think about on this? Other than, by the way, Master of Magic is the universal command trait, just so we're all clear, that allows you yes. to once a hero phase reroll a cast. So, which is good, super good, especially since you got a lot of, uh, you know, potential wizard generals. Okay, go ahead, Tom. Um, Cloaked in Shadow was what I gravitated gravitated towards first um, when I was building lists, and then I was like, oh, I don't know, Ruler of the Spirit Host, because I used to enjoy that. Like the old version, just restored a D three models. Now it gives you a 50-50 chance of like getting a half power unit. But I like reliability and neither of the like like none of those are doing what I need it to. Yeah. Because the reality is is that like cloaked in shadow, my problem with cloaked in shadow ultimately is like you need to protect against like the block of sentinels. Sure. Yeah. It doesn't stop the big block of sentinels. It doesn't stop the the big block adjudicators or Buffs. long strikes right. or whatever. It's it's interesting. Cloaked in Shadow is interesting. And depending on how the meta evolves, it could end up being a potential pick. Maybe. But what I actually ended up gravitating to, and I think that this is what I'm going to run for the foreseeable future, is actually uh, Spiteful Spirit. Yeah. Um, because, so what it does is at the end of the combat phase, if your general uh, you know, al was allocated any wounds that were not negated, uh, which I, like, from this weekend, I as part of my play style, like I push all of my heroes in almost all the time mm -hmm. because night haunt heroes have a wonderful attack profile, especially if they're buffed because when they are, they're in the bu bubble of buffs and we'll talk about this. They're on twos and twos, like universally, all of them are. So they're on twos and twos, neg one, ren two damage. Like that is the normal profile. It's just however many attacks of that you're getting. And so, um, but this, and so I regularly, even like, it, I would put heroes in places where they like they shouldn't be fighting because of like be, being threatened by giants or whatever. And the reality is is that between the ethereal and the ward save, these heroes are really durable. And unless somebody dumps all of their attacks, all of their super punchy attacks into a hero, they won't lift heroes. Sure, they just won't because of the layers of defenses like that. And so what's fascinating is that I will often have heroes taking one or two damage. Yep. Each phase. Like that like because I had them in combat. And so what this this ability does is this plays on that. And what it says is if they took damage that weren't negated, you can roll a number of dice equal to the wounds characteristic of the general. Yep. Okay. Um every uh four plus um for every four plus rolled, each uh enemy within six inches, each unit takes a mortal wound. Yep. Um and this combos really, really nicely with an individual that I would probably choose to be my general regularly, which is the Knight of Shrouds on Ethereal Steed. Yeah, because the, pony, he gets the Pony Knight. The Pony Knight, because he starts at six wounds, and then every time he kills a model with his sword, he goes up one wounds characteristic. Right. So, like, every combat phase, if you have him grinding, he's going to be jumping... Uh, he's going to be more than likely able to, to be pulsing out anywhere between three and five mortal wounds and the really As, nice the really nice synergy is with the bodyguard uh rule that the spirit host now have, which will yep. come to yep. keep yep. that guy hard to kill yep. so it it can just be in a place where you no i i agree completely i think for me it's either spiteful spirit or honestly just the good old ignax scales i'm glad to see ignax is back 
and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, now yeah, yeah. Uh, over on that, depending on what your general is, just moving your because it's only against mortal wounds, but that can be often how times can be a big deal. Burn you down. Um, and so you know it's fine. Ignax was Ignax. It's never bad. It, I I miss yeah. you, Ignax scales. I want you back. Um, but it, it's it's worse as a command trait than as an artifact. Let me just say that. Yeah. But I'm still glad it exists. But no spiteful spirit again. It's it. it we mentioned the Johnny nature of the book. You mentioned the combo with the Knight of Shrouds. Totally agree. That six inch pulse is actually a pretty big pulse. Oh, I know. <laughs> of more wounds. Like, because it's yeah. hitting every unit. Right? Yeah. So you're thinking, well, yeah, okay, it's only like three mortal wounds. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's three think mortal about wounds like a, to every enemy three units, every within combat phase. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a yes. lot. It's so good. It's yeah. so good. It can actually turn that character into a potential hammer in a way they just couldn't be otherwise. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's talk relics. Uh, so we got multiple different relic sheets here. Uh, Nico, you got you got any of the? Let's start with the basic ones here on this page. Any of these three uh, grabbing you? I mean, I think I know which one I'm gravitating toward, but which one? Gra do any of them grab you? two of these but i'll, I'll go with uh, and probably four overall for all the artifacts mm -hmm. um i'd probably say midnight tome is the most interesting uh though it does you kind of have to build the list around it so you're basically getting a, a an end of spell reliably a bit like the dock have gone a uh, you know a pr an invocation reliably without having to roll any dice and without the opponent being able to stop it or i suppose it's similar to the spell in a bottle although it's not any endless spell under the sun so you're probably, sadly, going to be doing it with one of the classic Endless Spells rather than the ones in the Battle Tome. So maybe Life Swarm, which is you know, obvious utility for healing either single models well or healing a hero's well. Or um, possibly you could do a, you know, a more of a combo with, uh, say, Rykonor and Umbral Spell Portal. You could maybe put Fight Last through, through the portal uh, reliably because Rykonor got... <laughs> The, the person with this artifact will put the portal down 100%, not even Teclas can stop it, and then Rykonor will be plus three to cast um, Soul Cage from out of out of range of an unbind. So it's, a, it's, it's potential, but it is something you have to invest in. Yeah, I would say also don't sleep on our good old friend, the, the Terminator, that we'll talk about. I, I know. I like You were that saying is... all that, Nico, and I was like... Or Terminexus? Yeah, they also have... still a six inch bubble of D3 Immortals. <laughs> I played against it and it, it's uh, the Hampshire DT, and it, it was the strongest part of the army. Um, however, it's got a price tag on it, um, which it is 85, I, which is, um, I, I wouldn't take it unless I had this artifact, so sure. I got at least guaranteed one use out of it. Um, well, so, I took it against Teclas. Oh. For and it was game five, right? Like that was the end, and I like I knew that he wasn't going to move Teclas out of the castle, and so Reichnor was sitting just outside of the thirty-inch oh, bubble, yeah. um, and so then like he didn't come out to me, right? You know, to out of his castle, and so I was like, cool, cool story, and I just threw a Terminexus right in the middle of the Lumineth army, and there was literally nothing they could do. Have they nerfed the range of the current the the new War Scroll though? Uh, they have so the new one so, instead of uh, setting up eighteen, it sets up twelve out. Yeah. So, but it still sets up twelve. Oh, it still oh, moves yeah. eight, and then yeah. pulses six inches off that. So it's still a twenty-six inch threat, which is very good by current standards of. You know, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, my god! By pulses. current standards of damaging uh, endless spells, it's maybe the best, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I assume your second choice is Pendant of the Fell Wind. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we all like Pendant, right? Because Pendant is, like, wildly, crazily good. Um, uh -huh. Subtract one from yeah. wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by enemy units while they're within three inches of the bearer. All units, yep. you know, we've got some void chill power going on here. Uh, it's just, it's great. It's freaking great. And, and this speaks to what you were talking about earlier, Tom, of, like, being able to maintain debuffs across yes. turns, right? A Pendant yes. allows you to do that. Yeah, it's interesting because it basically turns any hero into an executioner. Um, because that's that's what the executioner hero does. And when you're contending for like hero slots, I really liked like a cheap melee hero, like an executioner. And so I started with him or like a Cairn Wraith initially. 
And then the more and more I build it, I was looking at this. I was like, well, well, I'll just grab an item and give this or I'll, I'll free up that slot and give this to somebody else that can apply the debuff if I really want that. Yep. So it's good. All right. Very good. Let's talk. Let's continue here because we have more artifacts. So many artifacts. Uh, so obviously we've got some weapons and we've got some infernal treasures. So off of this page, Nico, anything at all, uh, anything at all grab you? Uh, the whole page, uh, the light shard, uh, it's just, it's a lovely plus one attack buff, which is like 50% extra damage on many of your, uh, you know, uh units of, of melee troops. So it's great. It's a bubble. Um, yeah, solid. Yep. Uh, I, I do not mind the light shard at all. Big giant plus one attack bubbles, which this is are generally pretty good, especially in, a, in an army that can still, frankly, struggle to do damage um, against some of the, the forces arrayed out there. Um, I want to give a special shout-out to the Reaper of Sorrows for being an absolutely terrible artifact. <laughs> but... but no, underline. <laughs> yeah, but... But... Having Rend Neg 4 actually written down, so we've got our Rend Neg 4 weapon that got put in the game. I mean, it's like, it's terrible. Okay, it's a terrible artifact. But I appreciate that we finally wrote the Rend Neg 4 artifact into the game. So, so thanks for crossing that barrier. We've this is the this is the Rubicon we've been we've been hovering on the other side of for all of AOS. What we and finally it, it got Rend for. Officially, no. Yeah, so it'll be um, Rend 5 before we know it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the, t- the two that I like are the Soul Fire Ring. Yep. And yeah, I like the Soul Fire Ring. Healing. Yes. I, it's a Soul Fire Ring in that, in that combo. Yeah, yeah. With, with my guy who's like chopping up little wieners and then pulsing out <laughs> these, these, uh, yep. these bubbles of damage okay, because. Yeah. Yep, because he's going to be bodyguarded and he's going to heal a d6 plus one because his sword also heals a one. Right. So his wound characteristic goes up one, the sword heals him one whenever he kills a model, and this is a d6 on top of that. Um, I mean, he's he is going to be in it to win it um, and just pulse and damage out like a madman. And then the other is, I actually kind of like Slitter. Okay. Um, because yeah. there's not... They have removed most of the ways in the game to remove models out of units. Sure. And this is still one way where if you're multi-charging, like oftentimes you're going to retreat out and then be able to like strategically hit where you want. And if they're not burying their wizard hero in a Lumineth army, if they're not burying their captains, their banner bearers, stuff like that deep in their line, you are going to lift them before the fight starts every single time. Now, be and, and that'll be, by the way, before you even attack. So if there are special effects that they grant, they actually get lifted before they can issue a command because they're not selected to attack. Right. So for example, like right. a lot of defensive things, like when this unit is selected, you know, you can trigger, you know, like all defense or whatever. Or I'm thinking about the uh, the stuff for OCR, right? That come that comes off of their their cap. Hecatos. Yeah, you can you can lift those Hecatos before they can activate those abilities because. This triggered ability happens before that unit is selected for combat. Sure. Um, which is a really interesting, like, again, Johnny, like, scalpel that you just simply don't see anywhere else in the game right now. Okay. Um, and so I, I think that, like, or, like this has made it into some of my lists. Because I simply, like, I like having this as a tool in my army if I need to remove models. Um, and it's really funny to me uh, to have a, a way to just lift um, Hearthguard Berserkers and sure. lift uh, 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 well, Plague Bearers or even Blight Kings. Like on a five or six, you lift a Blight King model. Yeah, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. I It, it is actually interesting because there are many very hard units you go into yeah. that your chances of literally removing one model after your attacks aren't even assured. So getting another chance to just lift one up can actually be valuable on those other those other enemy units. Yes. Things that are like four wounds, three wounds, super tough, you know, annihilators, blight kings, 
those kinds of things. Being able to just be like, no, nah, what are I'm fulminators? With that. What are fulminators? Are fulminators, fulminators six four? wounds, so you can't oh, get it. you can't get them. Bad. Yeah, because you have to roll yeah. greater than. Yeah, I'll lift an annihilator though. I'll take that. Sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like so again some some good picks here. That that's a good defensive slitter. I hadn't thought about it in those terms, but I don't uh, I don't disagree with you at all. That's good. All right, spell lores, Nico. You get one spell you're choosing. Let's just say, what's your top pick? Ooh, it's tough between two of them, but it's gonna it's the two defensive ones. It, I'll go for shade mist for the the minus one to be wounded on a on a chosen unit. Yeah, uh, mainly because you can rep you can rep well because that works on shooting as well, which is great compared to the like the melee minus one to wounds that we've discussed already. Um, Seal of Shaiish is also very good. You could potentially replicate that effect with um, uh, the command ability Disc Discorporate, uh, but I, I'd probably I'd some list you'll take both of those spells. I'm sure. Tom. Uh, I mean, for me, uh, my it's funny, I've actually, like, in my lists, I take four of the six of these, mm -hmm. like, mixed across three casters with, like, a double enhancement, uh, because I I love a lot of what, it's all toolbox stuff, all of it, and that's yeah, what sure, I love yeah. about it. But what's your top um, pick? What do you take in number one? A shield, a seal of Shaiish, every time. Okay. Uh, because, always, always, because the reality is this. I'm going to hit a unit with that and then hit another unit with Discorporate. <laughs> yeah, sure. Or another two units, potentially. Right. Dumb. Or if if by some chance I end up running Nagash in a list, right? Mm. Um, uh, Seal allows that unit to go up to a, down to a four ward. Right. Yeah, yeah. Which is nice. Because, yeah, so because it's not double command ability. And so because of Nagash is reduced by one as a command ability. And so if you have like a big pack of Grim Gas or Chain Rafts out in front of Nagash, right? He's going to he's gonna cast this on them yeah. because he gets the lore. And then he's going to reduce it by one. And so you're going to have like Grim Gas that are now on uh, Phoenix Guard numbers, fours mm -hmm. and fours, unrendable. And, and he's going to put models back in that unit, which is just, it's a nightmare. And what you haven't mentioned is the casting value of five, which is extremely generous. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, is Soul Cage um, making either of your lists as you keep going? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Soul Cage is an honorable mention for me, um, as is Spectral Tether. Uh, being able to pick up heroes and relocate them anywhere in the battlefield is always a good thing. Yeah, sure. And, and I mean, so again, you talk about generous casting values. The, the, <laughs> the, Spectral, you know, hero only teleports as a longtime Skaven player. I know the value of this sort of tool. Uh, yep. And, you know, casting something on a four is just like, yes, that's that's what I want to see. Right. It's reliable. Yeah, um, I want to pour one out for uh, Spirit Dra the old Spirit Drain, which used to throw dice equal to the wounds characteristic, which I made uh, my round one opponent eat twice. Um, I threw 35 dice one time and 40 dice another time against uh, Sun's army um, and made him meet a bunch of mortals that way. Uh, so pour one out for the old spirit drain because now we just got the bad a bad horde, the bad horde denter one. It's not even a horde killer. Yeah, the, um, horde, the horde thinner. The horde thinner. And then uh, pour one out also for reaping side, which was my favorite spell in the old spell lore, which was uh, choose an attack, reroll all hits and wounds. Um, because I was using it on my cruciator to make his make two Ren shots like super reliable and him to put up the buff previously. Um, yeah. And so because like I would put it on myself and then let them charge in at my hordes and then unleash hell with him <laughs> with rerolls and turn on the bubble suddenly in reaction to them coming in on me. Um, now you don't need to do that. His rules changed, but I still love reaping scythe. I still loved what it did. And so it makes me sad that it's gone. The reroll hits and wins. I understand though. They removed all, all those effects. Yep. So. Okay. It's definitely four big hits and, and probably another one that has its uses as well. So solid. And and it's funny, like another one that I actually like on this list for one hero specifically is Life Stealer. Um, I like Life Stealer on Reichnor. Mm -hmm. Because Reichnor is gonna ding himself for himself. one. Yeah. Get plus three to cast this spell. Do a D three mortals and heal a D three. Sure. 
So it's, so it actually like he almost always re, you know he he'll always catch back up for the wounds he lost, and it's basically going off on a four then. Sure. So, um, but I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't run it on anybody but Reichenor. Yeah, and similarly, Soul Cage. I probably only run on on Reichenor, and if I was doing that Umbral Spell Portal uh, Tome combo. Yep. But an interesting yep. one if you're going down that Hero Hammer route. Yep. Makes sense. Yep. All right. Let's talk processions. Uh, okay. So processions or you know sub factions. I mean that's what these are. Okay. Sure. Uh, maybe the most underwhelming part of the book. That's going to be my. You statement. are out of your damn mind. No, I, no I, way. I stand more than viable. Oh, okay, more. <laughs> hold on. Whoa, stop. More about five underwhelming stuff? than the mm-hmm. command traits. Uh... Okay, that's a fair statement. But I was taking the command traits <laughs> holistically with the artifacts, but no, okay, that's fair. No, I just mean, like, I actually don't dislike these. They're all fine. They're all viable. They're just all fine. Um, I'm not saying I dislike I think you're them. out of your mind. Okay. I think you're out of your mind. Cool. Then well, maybe too linear, as we kind of, as I kind of touched on at the start, they sort of force you to spam one. They encourage you to spam one unit, which has its pros and cons from a design <laughs> Two of them do, so, yeah. Two of them do. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. arguably, well, even the grieving region does well, to yeah. some degree because it's yeah. asking you no, to right. units of a certain three, size. Three. three of them shape your army. That is absolutely yeah. true. And yeah. then there's the one that I run. Sure, which is my favorite, <laughs> too. So that's fine. And I'm running okay. the other three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's cool. Let's let's get into it. Again, I don't think these are yep. bad. I, I, I don't want to I don't want to get like that. I don't want to be misinterpreted here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all right it's just i looked at them and i think it's the linear nature that actually bothered me i think nico what you just hit on because everything else i was reading was so like toolboxy and combo rific and i could kind of take what i wanted and then i got to these and i was like oh these are telling me to play a very specific thing in a very specific linear way and that just didn't sit as well with me i think that's what i'm actually identifying there um that being said there is one that's not like that so it's not like it's sort of all monsters gain this buff or all like like skinks gain this buff. It's like this one war scroll. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 Okay. You know what doesn't it? matter? Running heroes with any of these. No. Like that's, before, that's true. normally like the keyworded heroes, it's a big deal because they don't yeah. get the effects of the sub faction. In all of these, it's like doesn't matter. Yeah. Run what you want. <laughs> Other than the named heroes who are attached to Grieving Legion, which is where a lot of people are attached, but yes. But it, none of these things, none of them affect heroes zero. I understand. You, you're you're not incorrect. Yes, that's totally fair. So, okay. so cool. you can take yeah. named heroes and, and that actual keyword does... And you miss nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Okay, let's get, let's get into them. Grieving Legion. I'm, I'm going to burn through all four of these real fast. Okay, sure. just so sure. we can get them all on the table. Okay. Yep. All right. So, Grieving Legion, enemy units cannot retreat while they're within three inches of any friendly Grieving, Le- Grieving Legion units with ten or more models. Yep. Ten or more models being the most important last four words that have ever been attached to a, to a sub-faction sentence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the Emerald Host... Oh boy. Okay. After armies have been set up, but before the first battle round begins, you can pick D3 plus one, so two to four, different enemy units on the battlefield. At the end of each battle round, roll a dice for each unit you picked that's on the battlefield. On a two plus, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. If that unit is a monster, it suffers D3 plus one mortal wounds instead of D3. Okay, cool. So you get to pick basically two to four different units and then slowly bleed them over the course of the battle. So theoretically five times over the course of the battle. I say that knowing that, like, obviously that's not actually true. Never have I been so excited about my paint scheme matching a sub-faction. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, Scarlet Doom uh, is after a friendly Scarlet Doom Blade Geist Revenants unit makes a charge move. You can pick one enemy unit within one inch of that unit. If you do so, roll a number of dice equal to the number of models from the charging unit for each five plus that you that target suffers one mortal wound so they effectively get like a pseudo ogre charge is the easiest way i would describe yep. it it also obviously makes blade guys revenants battle line uh it makes quicks, you use only blade guys revenants 
continue. Yeah. And, well, yeah, highly incentivizes you to play a lot of Blade Guys Revenants, yes. Uh, and then the Quicksilver Dead. Uh, ward rolls cannot be made for wounds caused by attacks made by melee weapons with friendly Quicksilver Dead Dread Scythe Harridan units. Uh, and that makes Dread Scythe Harridan battle line and, yes, encourages you to play Dread Scythe Harridans. Okay. So now we've got all four of these on the table. Uh, Nico, give your, your general thoughts on the four of them. Remarkably well balanced. Um, overall, they all have power. There's no does. There's no like new, new Hermdar, which is just you know, useless in the Fire Slayer book, for example, um, which is great to see. Um, I think as we've sort of touched on, sort of Emerald Host sort of encourages the sort of hero hammer and sort of sniping and probably the most technical uh, Johnny of them. Uh, so, uh, the Grieving Legion, I could tell my little story maybe now. It sort of, I've had the distinct pleasure of uh, playing as Benjamin Sabah when he was using No Retreat Bone Grins plus a Rogue Idol. And it is, ve- it is when you have army wide No Retreat, it is very easy for your own models to trap. Um, Trap, trap you essentially. So you basically charge one unit, you have a little tail, uh, and you place them all 2.9 inches away from another unit. Um, you barely fight, and they pile in inefficiently towards you. Uh, and then they find that they've actually blocked off themselves from their actual hammers behind those outer screen units, suddenly actually can't get out of the castle. And so you have to sort of pile in the back of your castle and sort of run around the back. You know, in, in that game, it was Keepers of Secrets versus uh, sort of Keepers of Secrets behind Demonettes. And had I not deployed with an actual doorway that was just wide enough for the Keeper, but not too wide to let the Rogue Idol come in, I would have instantly lost turn one and it would have been game over. It is a, a brutal sort of NPE experience, the No Retreat. Thankfully here, it is tied to 10 or more models, uh, which is good. Um, quickly on the other two... Uh, I think Scarlet Doom is the sort of most sort of leaning into the MSU, uh, the, the multi-charging uh, um, system is it's very fla- it's flavorful and it suits, suits the, the sort of whole MSU drive of the, of the book. And then Quicksilver Dead uh, actually was the first one that jumped off the page for me, but that's probably because yeah. I just lost to, to Nerd on the, on the top table of an event. <laughs> so um, yeah, no, no war saves is obviously is really relevant in this meta. So. Yeah. Yep. It's funny. I actually started, Nick, I did the same thing. I jumped immediately to the Quicksilver Dead because I've been running Herodens. Like I, you know, at Adepticon and here, I've been running Herodens already. I have 20 painted. And I was like, oh, I love this because they do work mm-hmm. already. They're the highest damaging unit in the book, mm-hmm. like per per pound. Herodens really are. efficient with the frightful touch. Yes. Like they're super That's efficient. <laughs> that said, that said. <laughs> um, I quickly migrated to Emerald Host when I began to think about thinking about my play style um, and my kind of my preferred structure of my army. I didn't want to spam Herodons. I actually wanted uh, other units. And so uh, very quickly I mag- migrated to Emerald Host and I have not looked back. I love, like, imagine a world. In a world. Where the new Mortis guy did his job effectively. Which he does not. <laughs> Which he does not. And instead of choosing one unit, you choose a D3 plus one at the beginning of the game. And that and that choosing can never be undone. Yeah, sure. Yeah, That's Emerald Host. Just the fact that it's D3 plus one and not D3 is just such a game changer. I mean, that's going yeah. to be one of the best things we've started to see creep into version three from like the, the, the Derek damage profile of D3 plus three or D3 plus four to D3 plus ones in, in this book. Yeah. It just is so much better having a avoiding the d6s and the pure d3s yeah and i think it's important to realize here if your opponent has a couple utility heroes Uh, right this is actually a really good way to just put a clock on them and it combos really well with the aforementioned terminato right because this causes them and spiteful spirit yeah yeah but even if you can't get that dude in there yes that if you get that dude in there you're in like flynn you've wiped their utility heroes clean right but this gives you a real chance going into turn two that you're just going to like be able to clean their clock of all their little utility doofuses um, straight right. out. And like, yes, they can they can use the heroic action to heal one guy, but that's still beneficial if they if you force them into dictating that their heroic action heals a dude. 
and that's the only thing it doesn't doing. unbind your Termin Exus, right? <laughs> right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. Yes, and yeah, and also they're only stopping one of them. You're guaranteed two through four, so somebody's bleeding, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely. And by the way, not all heroes, not all utility heroes have such a bravery where they guaranteed heal at the same percentage chance that they are to take wounds here because it's two ups. They have an 84% chance to take wounds. Many heroes do not have an 84% chance to heal based on their bravery. Um, especially yeah. little, you know, sort of piddle whacker utility heroes. Um, and cleaning those dudes out can be actually really important to this army's success because yeah. this army ne it's needs like, to not be hit by somebody operating at maximum efficiency. Like Battlesmith, Rune Master. Like I can just I can, I can tick down through the Fire Slayer heroes, and I'm like, all of you guys. Yeah, sure. The, ti the timing being just before heroic recovery is is very interesting as well. Potentially yeah. really good timing. Yep. The just kills them. I saw a lot of people complain about the art that the Scarlet Doom is using yeah. the Dead Scythe yeah. and all that. Like, yeah. folks, it's because they sent out requests for art and said paint a red ghost, and that's what came <laughs> back. Like that's what it was. And somebody picked that. Like that's, it's there because it's red, not because it's a Herod, and that's why it's there. And the bottom one is there because it's silver, and these guys are there because they're green. No. That's why. Like it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward here. When three out of the four of these have color names, that's why they picked these. So. Cool. And the grieving one is mostly black. Yeah, sure, but I mean, like, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if this is meant to be sort of a, a kind of rendering of lady O. I'm not sure if it is over top of the hex wraiths like are they writing out from under her skirt i don't know what that is but either way she's not emerald host so you know right there which is the best yeah. right but, but it's just it's, red it's ghost what, silver ghost green ghost that's how it got a raid okay yep. so whatever it's fine okay love it uh yeah so all fair um i will say i think that the um, you know, we're going to come to Blade Guys Revenants later and we'll talk about them. But I actually really enjoy what I'll say about Scarlet Doom is I don't think you have to lean all the way into them to make this ability still valuable. The um, same is true of the Heron yeah. one, by the I, way. Yeah, sure. I, I agree. I, I, sorry, you go. No, by all means. Take I was just saying, yeah, like I would take like five units of 10 Blade Guys Re Revenants and then my actual hammer will be a combination of. 20 uh, Grimgasts uh, with the two inch reach and the incarnate elemental Gur as a monster choice. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And and the nice part about this is, by the way, when we get to Blade Guys, I mean, they're quite effective for not that. Like, they're decent on their points to efficacy ratio, certainly. And the fact that this also then swaps them over to Battle Line means you're just filling that up for free by taking those yeah. MSU units, right? Yeah. So uh, you are handing away, you're handing away your uh, that battle tactic for killing right. a sure. uh, a battle Absolutely. line. Like but, broken I mean, ranks it's... is just going to be given over. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's true in a lot of armies, and and frankly, I'm not sure that's not true in almost all the builds of this army, because you do have you, you're going to have like such a swath of different battle line in some builds that you're yeah. like you're quite likely be like giving one up almost by necessity. Sure. Right, sure. because you have lots of quite utilitous battle line here. Although, as as we know from anything with a five up board save, you can easily bounce and like just sure. leave it on two wounds. Those infernal uh, be, you know, beasts of no you know, on paper it should just go down, but sometimes you fire a whole twenty reavers at it to kill it or whatever. So. Yep, absolutely. Stupid beast of Nurgle. <laughs> I'm running them too. <laughs> All right. Well, uh grand strategies and battle tactics this part of the show i hate tom any thoughts on this i'm not i'm not talking about this section i refuse to talk about these things anymore i protest fine. until they're removed from the books that's right it's fine like one stop no return for battle tactics is easy if you have a coach in your army that's nice do, do grand strats first you got any strat thought there nico uh Dismantle the Brave, maybe in like in a team's event where you can't duplicate, you might take this one if you're going down this spirit host hero hand build so you keep your general alive. But they are That's a good pretty idea. awful. Like solve to claim. Like if you kill the thing with spells or impact hits, it's awful. 
sorry, don't, you don't get it, which is just awful. The tar- you know, if you kill the target you know, accidentally with something else other than attacks. If you even yeah. can kill the target, because it's like RPG. Yeah, if you can, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, feed on Terra is like, you better not go second in the final round, otherwise they walk right. away. So, no, they're particularly disappointing. Yeah, there are, most of them are things you will never play. Which is fine. Like, you know, if something's going to be bad, then let it be bad. I also um, love the designer's note on Feed on Terror, that you cannot yeah. complete this grand strategy if all the units in your opponent's army have been destroyed. If you're too good and you table your yeah. opponent, you fail your grand strategy. Uh, when they wrote that designer note, that should have been a real, like, red <laughs> flag to be like, hold on, maybe we've got a problem here. Should we take this back and look at this? Is this correct? So when they win a lot, you lose. You lose this thing. Wait, why? Huh? Yeah. So at any not, rate, yeah. not good against Sons of Behemoth, where that could be a real possibility of everything dying. Oh sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah. all right, yeah. So you mentioned battle tactics, go. Yeah, for me, like um uh maybe tides of terror. Um, like if you know you're going into a unit and it, you're not going to wipe it like a big body unit, like if you're going to go go in with at least two units, then you should be fine. Like yeah. there were many combats where like Tides of Terror was would have easily been accomplished by me. So that's a free one. Um, just, if you I, have, like, sorry, good. no good. I was just say very quickly, um, the half an inch thing means it's good to go against like a monster or something because otherwise they can take <laughs> away a couple of models and suddenly you're not within half an inch. You're right. within three inches. <laughs> Yep. Um, the, uh, you know, mass panic, if you know you're going to be hitting a bunch of stuff and not killing it again, like, you know, like there's a number of these where like there's a, they're good to have as an option. Let me say that. Sure. The problem is but, what happens when you roll in and you're too effective and you accidentally kill the unit or they, or because right, you've shut right. off inspiring presence, they just flee to battle shock on a bad roll. It's like, oh, right. good. I was too effective. And yet again, I lose. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and so most of the stuff I just like, I will probably never use. Yeah. So yeah, they're, cool. they're better than they're better than the Slanesh ones were. Um, not as not as good as the daughters ones, sadly. Yeah. Uh, please stop printing these. Okay. Or or alternatively, since they're never going to do that, I'm gonna I'm gonna rephrase it. Please print the the summer GHB battle pack to say you may not use these battle like. The only battle tactics that may be used in this battle pack are the ones included in this battle pack. The game will be much better for it if we do that. For this season. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. Season. That would actually make the game better. Then when you're just doing cash games, you want to use them all? Sure, go nuts. Use your own battle tactics. Have a good time. But in that like matched play battle pack, we're all playing with just the same uh, curated group of eight, not just allowing people to easily go five for five without a challenge, whereas other armies are struggling to get like two or three in. Yeah, nonsense. Okay. Cool. Scrolls. It's scroll time. Uh, it's Nagash. He looks a lot like Nagash when the last time we saw Nagash. Um, and he does all the Nagashi things. And he does all the Nagashi things. Uh, yeah, I mean, Nagash hasn't really changed um, since his last version when he got put into Night Hunt for the first time. Um, he's still Nagash. So, yep. Uh, here's the important question with Nagash. I'm not reading through all the stats. He, we already did this forever ago. It's Nagash. He acts like Nagash. Yep. Do you ever, do you have any lists where you take this guy? Because Raptors exist for a start. Yeah, he's too squishy. I'm, I'm going to just say that. Yep. Um, he's too squishy for 955 points. Yep. Um, he, that four up, here, here's the reality. That four up to mortals needs to just be a four up board. And I know that's super contentious, but I, I think it's true. Like for 955 points. He is a lot of points. He's so much. And I just. Yeah, or his wound stat needs to go way up, which it should do because he's or something. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's just not, he's not survivable enough for what he does. Yeah. And like I, and he lost to the main draw he had in Night Haunt was with Reaping Scythe to make his, uh, to make Alkanesh reliable. His big D6 attack, Nick 3 Ren, yep. make, move it to re rollable hits and wounds. Yep. And because that left with that spell lore, 
I'm never putting this guy on the table. Just not. No, I agree. He's a skip. He's a skip. He just doesn't actually earn his points. If he yeah. came down to the other god points, uh, six hundred yeah. and some. Well, yeah, upper six hundreds to lower seven hundreds. That's where all the gods are arrayed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like we could have the argument of what's the appropriate level in there. Um, yeah. Then, then I think maybe I'm... he could he could show up in some conversations or some lists. But right now, he's just literally half your list. I might, no I might consider him at like the seven hundred. I might consider him at seven hundred mark. I would yeah, never consider him in Night Hunt right now. He right. sits on my shelf with Glaive Wraith stalkers, surrounded by them. <laughs> yep. Sure. Um, yes, Pinfeldorf. Uh, well, okay. Technically, the answer is no. Nagash is not the most expensive unit in the game, but actually, yes, he is. <laughs> Because, because the other stuff is like weird Forge well, World. It's nonsense. stupid. It's a stupid Forge World corn oh. dragon. Yes, that doesn't count. <clears throat> Correct. Oh, I want to. I want to multi charge that dragon. Sure. Yeah, just watch that guy explode. I didn't even put his points here because that's how little I thought of him. Okay. Cool. Let's get into the actual scrolls now. Instead of this, instead of this poser who's showing up in this ghost book. You're not a ghost. Get out of here, ghost. Get out of here, not ghost. All right. Now let's get to the actual ghosts. Lady O. Lady O clocking in at 340 points. Uh, several things changed about her. Um, most importantly, I mean, like, I, I don't want to go through all the changes, but she's... Can, she's can I do some ground setting real quick? Can I, before we cover her. Sure. Okay, so some, here's some ground setting. Your standard movement for all ghosts is 8 inches across yes. the arm. Okay. Yep. Uh, your, your, your standard wounds range is from 5 wounds on the low heroes... To seven wounds on the high on your powerful heroes. That's it. Yeah. There's no one higher. So like that. That's the fluctuation that you're always going to see. The standard is four up save on all of your heroes. Yep. Okay. And the attack profile on all of them is almost universally threes and threes, neg one or neg two rend two damage. Yep. Okay. And it's going to range between three attacks and five attacks a turn. So when you think about any hero, you need to look like think about it in relation to how it rates with all the rest of the heroes who have almost identical profile. Yeah, no, that's great. That is some really great level setting. You're absolutely right. So eight inch move, unless they're yep. on a pony or a, a, a yep. thing that makes them go quicker. Five to seven wounds, four up base save. Obviously, they're all a base ethereal, so they all have a six up ward. Yep. Some people do have other ward saves on top, which we'll talk about in just a second. And then you're exactly right. They got the Stormcast treatment profile effectively, where you know almost universally it's three to five attacks, three threes, neg one or neg two, two damage. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. And remember, as always in this army, any six to hit wounds automatically. So we'll shortcut the 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 wound roll. The wound roll. So one in six attacks auto wounds effectively. Okay. Cool. Um, Lady O's a war master. She's double caster, double unbinder. She got a little. She got a little girl. No bonus. Still. No bonuses to cast. No bonuses to cast. She does not. She does have a four up board now, uh, mm -hmm. which is you know, good, real good. Like a built in four up board is real good. Um, so she's you know almost, almost universally four up, four up. Uh, there are of course counters to everything in the world, but she's almost yep. universally just four up, four up. Um, she can, her new ability to, to restore things is like a lot sort of stronger than its old version where once per game, she can just return D six lane models to every summitable unit on the battlefield. Um, which is sometimes challenging to use properly. If you're running hard MSU, if you have a lot of very small units that are going to tend to get wiped out, uh, you don't always have the chance to capitalize on this. So mm -hmm. I think there is some some tension there. Uh, her Mortark of Grief ability is quite interesting, where you roll a dice each time an enemy unit issues a command within 12 inches of her. On a 5+, plus, that command is not received. It still counts as having been used, and the command point that was spent to issue the command is lost. It's a very frightening ability if she's floating around in the mix, just because mm -hmm. a third of the command shutting off. When, when you've already got an army that's shutting off like Inspiring Presence on the reg, is... is it's just a scary thing to be to waste that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
she her new sort of shooting quasi attack is, and how it works now instead of the old thing that she had where she did two different sort of mortal wound pulses around her is just now lifting the veil just like at the starting of the shooting phase you pick an enemy unit within 12 you roll the die and that's the number of mortal wounds it suffers and if you do it's a d3 which is basically how her old ability works to a point um she just had a different thing as well and then she still has grief stricken which is just Plus one to plus one negative minus one, one for an enemy cast. to hit and plus one for you to hit. Still cast on a seven with no bonuses. Sure, sure. I understand. Yeah. All right. And it's a, yeah. yeah, and she's in Grieving Legion. Now, here's what I'll say about Lady O. I know you're not super hot on her, Tom. I don't, Nico, I don't think you are either. Uh, I watched her on the table, and I got to say, I really liked her. Um, Just because her presence as a, a four-up, four-up, like she's and, and with a with a built-in self heal shooting attack and like obviously having access to other potential healing capabilities, right? Um, just made her like unreasonably durable. She could just kind of float around with impunity as long as she wasn't getting slammed by a by a true hammer. You know, like if a true melee hammer comes into it, it'll lift her, of course, right? If if there's a sentinel unit on the table, she's lifted. Uh, I watched a bunch of Sentinels shoot into her twice and fail to lift her. I watched a big Sentinel unit do it. Did they get Lambent lamb Light off first? No, they the didn't have Lambent hits? on her. No, they didn't have okay. rollable hits on her. But, I mean, that was over two shooting phases, and she ended up being at full wounds. Yeah. By the time she was where she wanted to be, because she would just, like, heroic action, heal, and then shoot something and heal. <laughs> right? And it's yeah. just like, Broof, she's back to full. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then keep floating along. I I just think, I mean, y- sure, there is some Mortal Wounds things in the game, like Sentinels, that are still scary to her. But even they aren't guaranteed to lift her. And, like, if they don't, if they put that unit into yeah. her and fail to lift her, that is such a win for you. Yeah, because she pops back up. Like, she'll right. back up, but go back up to full. Yeah. Like, you just wasted that entire unit's turn doing... Yeah nothing yeah right you, you can always put her off the same in reserve if you're really worried about raptors or 30 cells yeah but it's true yeah. she can be one of the three first. units you pick up yeah but the, but then you lose your two spells spells yeah sure but i mean com- coming on to the spells even i just feel she's too she's just too many random elements the, you know the unbuff casting and unbinding you're you're basically overpaying for that i think and then you've got two abilities that both key off effectively D6 rolls or maybe D6 plus one. Sure. If those were like D3 plus three or D3, even D3 plus two, I'd be a lot happier. Um, as for the, the Mortark of Grief is like, it's, she's going to be almost a god tier level, you know, Mortark level uh, character in the game. But like, you know, a unit can just be outside of the aura, issue it to a unit within the, within the aura and they're unaffected. And sure. there are you know, similar abilities, overpowering stench, and even the new crown of woe for the dock that work off issue. Oh, sorry, work off receive, receive instead yeah. of issue. And so you can't just sidestep them. You know, occasionally be good, like the Glockkin will try and do his thing, and the five up is rolled. But it's just it doesn't live up to that Mortark level power. And just it's the three forty. You know, it's more than yeah. the C, who's like you know he's got a very defined role of being a, an Uber caster, but short of techless he's he's really up there or the or certain prime is more than more than he is and he again has that very defined role the the reliable hammer charge um at reserve um she feels almost a bit like gobsprack in that it's a lot it's like a big grab bag of abilities but n- no one ability is like this is it um sure. I, I would say that if you build around her, if you do that hero hammer build where you've got at least two units of three spirit host, maybe you could go crazy and have a big, you know, nine even, and just, you know, offload eight wounds onto one unit, eight u- wounds onto the other unit, and keep her alive and, like, tie things up, and you've got the other heroes and they're all, they're all sort of bouncing to the bodyguards, that there may be a build there, but I worry that, you know, what happens if you fail the charge on the bodyguard unit after the heroes have gone in? Or vice versa. You know, they've got sure. to be right next to each other, otherwise it fall, falls apart. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, I, to me, it's, it's a price tag. <clears throat> like yeah. she, she went from two ten or two fifteen to three forty, and functionally, the only thing that changed 
was um, her four plus ward. She went from a six ward to a four plus. She has some and better she, restore now table wide, but sure, I understand. Sure. sure, like well, that's no. Before that was all units got one back one model every every hero phase. I understand. To now once per game one d six models, I which actually prefer the new the old one. Sorry. Yeah, I think I'd rather have the old one. The like rates <laughs> and you know, like to consistently put back bodyguards. Yeah. You know, like imagine being able to put sure. back like two spirit host units, put back one set of three wounds every hero phase. I like the ability to spike it, is my honest answer. Since you're not just rolling die sure. for every unit, th this does allow you to spike it. But I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. And so, um, like, I just, she's so expensive for what she does. And, like, when I look at her, this is a decision that I have to make. Sure. Do I take her or I, do I take Reichnor? In either Guardian of Souls or a Crucial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's fair. It's fair. I, I, I get the I same number of spells. I get a more reliable spell. I get better melee attacks. I get better buffs. Like, yeah. both of those. And in general, doesn't actually do anything no. here, which is a, well, a fascinating consequence. Like, oftentimes, like before, having another general was a big deal because you could use the command ability that let you, like, sure. rip units to you or whatever. Her being a general does nothing. Other than increase range from twelve to eighteen inches for issuing command, sure, zero else, and so I just, like, no way, zero. yeah, I, 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 I struggle. I don't her. think she's a bad choice, but I'm still, but I, but I am empathetic to all of what you're saying. That like she may not be the best choice. I am just right, saying right. I think she's not bad, but you're you're probably yeah. not wrong about the points. It feels like she could come down a little bit. Yeah, because I mean, again, like. Reichnor is the exact same profile as her. Seven wounds, like he's yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a se like seven wounds. He actually oh, we'll get on to him in a minute because Reichnor's yeah. in my top picks. Like we're we're gonna do yeah. the we're gonna do the hero sure. draft once we get through. Okay, okay. yeah, okay. yeah, that, that's fine. Let's go ahead. We'll keep okay, going. yeah, I want to keep moving. All right, uh, now we move on to maybe one of my least favorite guys. I'm glad you're building him though. Uh, Kurdos. You're out of your you're out of your mind. Wow, this dude okay. is the king now. This I'm guy not, is the king. I'm ready. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm fed unfair to king. I right, we're we're I love how we're the opposite on, on these first two. Yeah. It's great. Yep. Yep. So Kurdos, as you mentioned, like we he has this sort of standard hero profile at the top end. So seven wounds. Now, the nice part about him is he's big rend and big damage. So he has neg three rend and three damage. Like he does he's he's a hard hitter. Yeah, he is. Um, and then he I'm has this, boy. at the start of the battle round, he can uh, effectively steal a command point. I understand. He can, if I'm, I'm explaining it. On a five yeah. up, he effectively steals a command point from your opponent. Okay? Yeah. Cool. All right. So, and Kurdos is 210. He's also yeah. in Grieving Legion, not that it matters. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so same profile as Olander on wounds and the movement and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, but he uh, hits a lot harder. Way better, way better attacker. Yeah, but no, uh, a hundred, two hundred ten points cheaper. You could include him and a spirit host bodyguard unit, yeah. who ward saves him on a three plus. True. For yeah. the, for the cost of for less than the cost of a lender. I understand. I mean, that's just my problem with him is so I have the opposite problem to what Nico just highlighted with Kurdos. Okay. okay. Nico's a sort of method of attack was i didn't call him turdos but I, that is now his name i'm calling him turdos there we go okay <laughs> boom Bruce. thank you bill robertson that was not what i said but i am i am okay with that and will now say that yeah here's yep. my issue with him okay. is lady o the, the attack against lady o was she has this big grab bag of stuff and you're not sure if it's ever going to be useful i like crap like that because i'm like some of this will be useful sometimes right yep. And, and like yep. she's a double caster. Yeah, she has no bonuses, but that's okay. I like two more casts and two more unbinds, right? Like you know, sometimes you just need to cast spells. It's good stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. She can yeah. restore models. She can do these different things. She has mortal wounds shooting, which is very very valuable, right? Yep. I mean, yes, it is this roll, but still, just a two up, you take d six mortals, which is effectively what her rule is, right? Yeah. Um, I ain't bad. I mean. I run stupid cockatrices in my, you know, army that's on a four plus. That's a lot cheaper, but my point still stands. It's a powerful ability. Um, this dude is just Mr. Melee. Now, he hits like a truck. Okay, I don't disagree. 
<laughs> but I'm not sure he's going to, with that melee profile, be able to earn his place. That's just it. Like, I want more toolbox stuff. I don't need just this dude. We got other ways to do damage. I, That's my I think where he does come in is that because he's got such a small base, if you're trying to do the thing where you're, where you're multi-charging a, a, a Mega Gargan or a, you know dragons with five units, and you're just putting in like one or two Blade Guys Revenants, you know, actually connecting the charge, and there's a tail back, and they're all trying to, you know, not use up that surface area between them and, and share it and not block each other off. The fact that Kurdos is such a tiny base with that much uh, hammer power uh, is is quite tempting. But yeah, he is he's pretty monodimensional, and he's got that sort of extra he, bonus rule. He's what him. I call anti Kragnos. Sure, okay. it could be because. Minus Say what? It could be minus five rend, effectively. He could easily be. We live in a world where he will easily be minus five. Yeah. And so you're going to come in and almost one round Kragnos with just Kurdos. Because I'm not going to charge with him. I'm going to charge with four other heroes. And all of them are going to be on twos and twos. Every single one of them. Because of the AoE buffs that night haunt can spit out between the guardian souls and the the thing i have a 12 inch bubble all everybody's going to be on twos and twos increase ren by two and he's just going to lift crack he's going to put 15 wounds on without without even batting an eye without on neg five rend okay. and so like he is your answer to anything that is a super safe thing sure yeah, I mean, okay. And so, like, I like, I'll pay two ten for that. Okay. That's a really good deal. And you know what? The, and this is my favorite part about it. He's not the only one. <laughs> like, mm. it, like in the build that I'm looking at, like I'm playing Hero Hammer, <laughs> and yeah, I'm gonna sure, go yeah. for all the hero, like all. I the, didn't state like, it, but we we should just state it here that like I think most lists are gonna contain four to six heroes, easy, easy, right. all day. And I'm gonna go in with most of them. And they're going to hit harder than most units in the game between the, the handful of foot heroes. They sure. just are. He has a gonna... power per square inch. You're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and he's a small base. I mean, like, this is his base. He's on what, a uh, 50, 60? Uh, it is a, I'll tell you exactly, it's a 60 mil. Okay. Yeah. Like, that's so exactly good. what it is. Yeah. Um, and so, like, for 210, and then he's also, like, again, sometimes playing in the action point game. Like, I don't really care about any of that because I'm going to put him shoulder to shoulder with a number of other melee heroes and you're going to have sure. to choose who to remove and and they're going to be bodyguarded by Spirit Host. Yeah, I'm I'm sus. That's my problem. That's fine. Um, That's the, fine. The, but, but hey, I've been wrong before. I could be wrong here. I like that at least we're having good dis that both that, that there's yeah. I like that like we, there's arguments on both sides for all of these which I think is good. Yeah. Okay. And so like I think he's, I I think he's reasonable value but he's not one of the auto take heroes that we'll probably come on to. That's fair. Uh, I have not built a list without him. Wow. Bold he's often my, yeah, he's often in mine too, but Okay. Because again, because of the, the bubbles. Page. Because of the bubbles. Hmm. I, like my heroes are perpetually on twos and twos. I understand. All right. Let's and keep so going. I want to yeah. make sure we cover that. We got a lot of heroes yeah. to get. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> These yeah. guys got a lot yep. of heroes. Okay. Yep. Let's come to my dog here. Uh, yeah. I am very excited about this dude. I, this guy I'm in for. Okay. So all the drowner, our new boatman. Uh, I like this guy a lot. Um, he dropped out of my list, by the way. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fine. I don't think he's an auto take, but I like him a lot. Mm -hmm. um, he's he has shown up like in several of the sort of lists that I was playing around with and just building out for fun. Um, so he's slightly faster than our other people at a ten inch move. Um, his attack profile is like fine. <laughs> it's fine. He has this still the random damage thing as opposed to just being two, which is what we would actually just all prefer. But sure, because he's got a big or it's got to be a d three. Sure, why not? It's a three inch reach. I like three the three inch against Sloppity Bar Viper. Sure. Good. Screw that guy. Yeah. <laughs> but he's 175 points, which I love. Um, he has a totem built in, so he does have a long issue range, which is nice, just as a small side mm -hmm. benefit, but it's there. 
Um, and he has a command ability called Passage Through the Underworld. So you can use this command ability at the start of your movement phase. This gets to what you were talking about earlier. Um, if you do so, pick one friendly Night Haunt unit on the battlefield that is visible to this unit. That unit must receive the command. First, remove this unit from the battlefield and set it up again on the battlefield more than nine inches from all enemy units. Then remove that friendly Night Haunt unit from the battlefield and set it up again wholly within 12 of this unit and more than nine from all enemy units. This counts as their move for that phase. Um, fantastic. What a, like, he can, because he's also a totem, he can grab people from relatively far away. He can set them up relatively far from him. Like, it's a lot of different mobility happening between his move and their move, between what's going on. It is on identical there. to the old, uh, it is identical, rules-wise, truly identical, to yes. the old um, uh, Dreadblade Harrow trick. Yeah. That, like, moving your Harrow and then teleporting another unit as a general to him. Like, it is simply doing Id exactly what that trick was. That was a yeah. combination of a unit and a ability. They combined that effect into a single new model and that's what they gave yep. him yeah yeah he's, he's kind of like a, a variant on kurdos he's still pretty pretty good hammer but he's also got that utility of the command ability that's the only war scroll command ability in the book yep. uh, and they're, all, they're very rare these days and that does open up a potential combo where you actually make him the general you sacrifice the command trait and then you can do you know double teleport so he all right will teleport and with another unit, and then the Harrow will also teleport from somewhere else with another unit. So you could potentially redeploy the whole, you know, a huge chunk of the army to another yep. flank, which has potential. Yeah, that's yep. the kind of stuff I dig. Like, exactly, that's exactly where I was going to go. Like, I yeah. love when you can just be like, my yeah. whole army is over here now. You know how I think, Tom, right? You know, I love I do. The, I do. the wacky I do. movement he plays, game. He plays KO. <laughs> no, I, yeah. do. I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And like, this is. Uh, but as you say, he also has like a little impact hit thing that can do some mortal wounds and yeah. will buff up his attacks and stuff like that. So yeah. he can do decent damage. I don't want to. I, I like him as a hammer. I do. Yeah, like, like, Back as off. like, so like the way I would use him is I would use him shoulder to shoulder with Kurdos in the hero bubble, right? Come in and hit things. And then late game when I need to go steal an objective, I'm going to you rip him and a unit across the table and take your objective. Sure, or potentially threat. Well, and again, because of because as you mentioned, it's as per that old ability. But because there's range, you could potentially threaten two objectives depending on how the enemy is arrayed, right? Because right. it's not like you're setting them up exceedingly tight to each other. Like you could easily have him threatening one objective and the unit he drops threatening another. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I dig him. I think he's cool. I think he's a great addition to the line. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of wish this had been the dude that broke the wounds cap. Um, if I had anything to say yeah. about him, I just wish he had been eight wounds because he's got a boat. I wish yeah, he got he a bonus a wound for the boat. He does. He did get a boat. <laughs> so uh, he's a he's. But the, you think of him like that. He's a scripter mortis with a boat. Yes. He's like knight on uh, which is six wound that bumps him to seven. He's sure. a uh, knight of shrouds. Is five wounds base, but when he gets a horsey, a ghost horse, he goes to six. So this guy is just a scripter mortis at six. It gets a boat that goes to seven. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep moving. Reichnor, the grim hailer hauler, grim guy. He's, Here's my he's boy. Grim. He's a grim boy. I mean, okay, this dude's amazing, right? I, do, first of all, do any yep. of us not Still like amazing. Reichnor? Still amazing. Yes. I think he's good. But I wouldn't go. I wouldn't say he's he's not in every list. You know, the plus three to cast is absolute money, but it is on one spell. Um, yeah, he's solid stat wise, solid as a potential assassin, which is which is nice. His own spell is is decent. Got an eighteen inch range. I'd love it a bit more. But yeah, if you if you build for him, he has a lot of potential and reliability, which is nice. Yeah, I like Reichnor a lot. I the main thing I like about him is yeah, he's he's again attacky. He's got kind of the the Topish endish profile of offensive damage like this guy i'm all about he does enough yeah. damage to keep me interested he's very fast which he's i like he's an independent operator like yes. he's a wonderful independent operator because he can generate his own hit and wound if he chooses the right targets yeah right so he yep. doesn't need to be in the bubble and what's fascinating a lot of people like, throw around you, arcane tomes that's all i'm saying right <laughs> and i think Vince, i think you keyed on it and on, on one of my favorite aspects of it which is his movement is 14 yep which it doesn't look like that's a big deal until you remember that he has retreat and charge. Yep. yep. That means that when he gets stuck in, your objectives are no longer safe. 
Because yeah. he's going, he can retreat over the top of you. So easy. The off, difference off between the, 14 off and after casting. Sorry. Yeah, no, yeah. go, 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 go. After casting metamorphosis first. With plus right. As a monster to five then models. jump, jump up to five wounds or to count five. as five models. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I really dig this dude. And I will say, Tom, the difference between moving eight for retreating over units and moving 14 for retreating over units. And again, you know, you mentioned the base size on uh, uh, Kurdos. Kurdos. On yeah. Turdos. Okay. Yeah. And this dude is also not on a very big base at all. Like, he's, no, on a he's on a base. smaller base. Yeah. Yes, he's on a cap base. And so, like, I think he packs a lot of potential in that in that space. And again, at 190, I'm a buyer. I think he's a perfectly good deal. Um, like, he does everything I like. He's the right price. I love his cast ability. Um, yep. The fact that he can juice himself so hard and get the spell out there that when you need it out there. That he can sit back and get something out or get up there and still be relatively uh, convincing. The fact that he still hits hard enough and can, and can pick targets and be a good assassin... The fact that he can retreat over the top, I love everything about Ragnar. I mean, he like he if you are if you include um, Terminexus, he has to be in your list in my mind. Like you can't he's not. He's the thing that powers it out there. He's the one that's going to push out Terminexus. Yep. You know what? You also can't like discount is his candle ability. They changed it so it's weaker now. Like before, you could target units, so you could shoot out wizards from units. Sure. Which I didn't do against my Lumineth. That was one of my misplays. Is I should have been killing all of his wizards, sure. um, with all with Ragnar, and I wasn't. I I, like I should have worked, but yeah. By the Say way, what? I don't think that actually works because of the, the new rules in version three. But yeah, sure, by the way. like well, it, it says that you can use. You, originally, it's take a model like, for it. But yeah, yeah, a certain it model take that. allocated to the unit as usual. Yeah. Um, but now, so it's weaker than that, but it's still auto mortal wounds with no anything. You're just like, ah, oh, that guy, take a wound. Yeah. yeah, you? Yeah. And it's 12 inches, which is a huge bubble. There were so many times where, like, he's on the other side of a terrain piece, and I'm just like, mm, that guy takes a mortal. And he's like, what? And it's a 12 inch bubble. You know, it's any model within 12 inches. And they're, you know, and so, like, he would often, like, put that last wound on something and just pull it off the table. But guaranteeing a battle tactic and be really nice if they just yeah. happen to be on one wing left. Right. Or yeah. stick a game ball on it as well. Yeah, th think about it like this. That candle is a free arcane bolt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's what it does. Every turn. Every hero phase. Um, and so I just... I love this guy so much. And now you can bodyguard him with spirit hosts. Like... I'm feeling keener and keener, I have to say. <laughs> yeah um and so and he's also a huge like he's my favorite recipient because he's going to be in the mix sure and so obviously i love him with race storm right because this is a really effective spell like way more effective than you'd think because like i shot a unit of light kings with this race storm Fossil. Well, he he was only the the model was down to one wound on a on a blight king and so I got to drop two D3 wounds on him because the yeah. first D3 killed a model. Well, then I got to roll another D3 to do an additional D3 mortals. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm like, he, he... First. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Do the candle mortal first as well. Yep. Yep. And so it's just a really interesting set of... Um, like, his, his spell is punchy for a damage spell. Right. And, um, and I often put the strikes last spell on him because it's a wonderful yeah. utility spell for him. He's going to be in the mix anyways. And like, there's one uh, like my win against giants. What I did was, um, I went in with all my big stuff on the top giant, and then I had him drop um, strikes last on the other giant, and went in with all of my heroes, um, and my heroes inheritance, and ended up lifting both giants in a turn nice. because there was just enough damage between. Like, I fought here first, and then. Uh, with all my like a thirty block, and then the Herodons and all the heroes lifted the other giant because he because I got to fight with everything before he went in. Yeah. And so when you're if you're doing MSU, that you don't underestimate that strikes last. Like it's so 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 important because yeah. being able to pick your fights is such a big deal. And this guy is going to be in the mix, and he's the wizard to to cast that. Yeah, because he yeah, can he, actually power he, the spell through close up. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you do 10 charges, you might not get one of those 10 ups, and right. then you don't have the fight last. And that is the weak spot of MSU. They will pick up a couple of units after you attacked first. Yep. 
Yeah. So redundancy is a, is a big deal. And this guy brings it for the always strikes last. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with it. Okay. I hope we've sold everybody on Reichnor. Also, by the way, just as a side note, this dude is like a truly amazing model. Can we just also say that? I mean, like, I know that's not what we're evaluating, but like, seriously, this dude's a boss. It's a great looking model. Okay. Yep. Uh, from the, from the high heights to the low lows, the Hard pass. Script, keep going. The Stop. Mortis. We're not even, yeah. we're not even looking at this war scroll. Just keep moving. Do you know why this war scroll is so bad? <laughs> like, or you know what? Let me say it this way. You know what's so indicative? I love that you can't oh. stop yourself. Go. Say what? I love that you can't stop yourself. Because I was going to skip it. <laughs> then you start. Then you yeah, got yeah. into it. Go. Sorry. He doesn't actually follow the rules. Yeah, he's your he only has, he has hero. a bad attack too. Yeah. He's the only hero out of all of them that has a bad attack profile. That's because he's attacking you with a pen. <laughs> a not but he's bad. Like, it's just so bad. Okay, we can move on. I'm just like, saying, Tom, by he, the standards of attacking someone with a pen, this dude is Jason Bourne. Okay? He's worse than Lotan, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know many people who have that kind of a profile on a pen. So, anyways, that's something. Okay. All right. I hate this guy so much. I know, yes. Uh, he's bad. Don't use him. There we go. Skip. Next. Okay, cool. It's fine. There are like six other units at 150 He's points. He's so far down the list. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, Knight of Shrouds and the Knight of Shrouds on Steed. We'll just talk about them together because they're effectively the same guy. Just one has a pony. Um, five wounds and six wounds, and then obviously the move because of the pony being the, the key difference here. Um, they both have the, the same sort of stolen hours, and the previously mentioned thing that we talked about during the combo, the wombo combo with the uh, command trait is at the end of the combat phase if any enemy models were slain by attacks made with this unit's sword of stolen hours in that phase you can heal one wound allocated to this unit and can add one to the wounds characteristic of this unit as you mentioned uh, fantastic combo with the uh, with the spiteful command trait spirit. yes with spiteful spirit um, because he just can continue as long as you can keep getting him in the right fights which he again 12 inch move isn't 14 but it's still pretty good uh, he can hopefully be choosing his fights pretty darn well. Um, and then he has other rules that don't actually matter too much, but they're fine. They're not bad. They're just okay. Uh, and that's the Lord of Geists, where uh, once per battle, this unit can issue the all-out attack command to a round. Battle round. Unit. Not battle. Sorry, per battle round. Yes, thank you. Once per yep. battle round. Yep. Uh, without a command point being spent. Um, the other guy on foot, by the way, can do redeploy or unleash hell. So that's yeah. that is a so difference. So this is the one you want uh for night haunt in general. Right. And uh the the horsey guy. And for me, like he fights with a unit, so yeah, it's he can chain to have activate. him near he he's chain your chain activate activate like with here. your grim gas again yep. grim gas. Yep. Um which is nice. It's nice to have that as an option. Um he has the best attack profile you can basically have outside of being a named hero, which is five attacks on the threes and threes, make one two. The, the Stormcast Lord profile. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and at 155 points, he's he's good. Like, it's good value. Good move, good capabilities, good combo potential. Yeah, I mean, he's a good dude. Nico, anything we missed on the Knights? Yeah, I think they just they just get slightly edged out by some of the other heroes on, on utility. That they're fine and they work well in that sort of hero hammer combination that we talked about. But uh, a few others that I just slightly prefer. Yeah, totally fair. Okay. Cruel Gas Cruciator. Oh boy, oh boy. This guy changed a lot. And did he get... <laughs> this is where we begin the uh, stealing of another army's allegiance abilities and handing it to, in a controlled way, to one of your heroes. So do you like... Th do you like Coalesced? <laughs> I mean, I do. So let's just give that to a, in a bubble to a hero. You're going to see this uh, kind of thing repeatedly. So the Cruciator Six Wounds, other than that, he's basically the sort of standard profile. Um, and his ability, I mean, the reason... So now we get into the part where it's like, everybody's got an ability. Let's do, Is the ability worth taking them, right? That's what it comes down to. Yes, right, right. And so, because it's just this one ability, heroes. So the Mr. Cruel Ghast, he has... Uh, if this unit is within 12 inches of any terrified units, 
So just having a Night Haunt within three inches of a unit makes it terrified. Subtract one from the damage inflicted to a minimum of one by each successful attack that targets a friendly Night Haunt unit wholly within 12 of this unit. Woo, that's real good. Now you got obviously that's a bubble to maintain, but coalesced is good. You just gotta you, but you do need to be thinking. There's about an interesting rules hiccup here. Like sure, hit it. There's a there's an interesting rules hiccup here because he is checking for a terrified enemy unit within twelve. Yes, he is. If if that is true, yep. If that condition is true, all other units. No matter what the situation is, right? Yeah. Reduce damage by one. Yes. So That's what terrible. that actually ends up doing is you get a twenty-four inch bubble. If one mo one enemy unit is within twelve mm -hmm. of him, that's terrified. You get a twenty-four inch bubble across, where all units within that bubble reduce damage by one. Yep. That's pretty good. It's good with no retreat. It's yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. good also. I, I, It is. I agree it's good with no retreat. I also think it's good, by the way, with Tom's sort of hero hammer type of build. Yep. Right? Good with everything. Because it's very easy to keep all of those heroes within that bubble range, no problem. Unlike maybe sometimes a big unit. might You might sometimes have some challenges yep. with some piling in or whatever. But, like, all of yep. those heroes suddenly become hard as a coffin nail. Yeah. Right? And right now, as it's currently worded, if you have multiple of these guys, it's stacked. Um, and so, like, if you have two, then, like, that Maw Crush is thrown around one damage attacks. Uh, yeah, because uh, there's no reason it doesn't stack right now. Right. right. Yeah. I say it right now, obviously, because that one if, it, <clears throat> if, that, if that survives the FAQ or if your event happens before the FAQ drops. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Like yeah, ACO will. I love this guy at 150 points. I just think he's such a powerful tool. He's such a powerful defensive tool. When used yeah. well, I just think he could... Like, this is a, a a fulcrum you can lever a game on. Like a game win on. Yeah. Right here. He's first in every list, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, and <clears throat> let me just say, do not sleep... <clears throat> Sorry about that. Do not sleep on four neg two rend attacks. Yeah, sure. Sure, his ranged attack, yeah. I'm, yeah, because they're on threes and threes. Mm -hmm. So I regularly, like, would choose a unit to shoot out or to, like, kill, like, uh, the battle line unit. Like, uh, and they might have had, like, five wardens left, right? Well, that might be, you know, like, he's going to play on burning a bunch of pennies or defenses or stuff like that in the combat phase. Yeah. To preserve those wounds. But suddenly, when you're doing wounds in the shooting phase... A couple splash wounds here and there. And then you combine that with like Reichnor shooting out some mortals here and there. Suddenly, like you're going to snipe out units and thin stuff out way quicker than most people anticipate. You like can find these the power of the that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I love, 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 love his shooting attack. Yeah. I'm sad that I don't get reroll all hits and wounds like I used to. Is I gave him the arcane tone, which gave him yeah, reaping size. Sure, sure, of course. I mean, <clears throat> I'm glad most reroll hits and wounds is gone from the game. I'd like to see it all completely disposed of. Sure. At any rate, sure. yeah. So I think this guy's a, a take from all of us, right? Like he's he's a top yeah. pick. Yep. He's yep. he's, 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 he's a high draft pick. At least one. Unless the meta goes to like all damage one. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Sure. Sure. Exactly. Right sure. now we're dealing with. A lot but, and then of he's an easy stuff. cut. Like, sure. it's funny, because yeah. if that happens, he's an easy cut, and I, there's a ton of other things I'm going to put in instead of him. Right. Yeah. Well, let's go from one strength to strength here. <laughs> uh, the Dreadblade Harrow. Yeah. I very much like this guy as well. He's at the five wound, so the lower end, but he is faster because he's got his little spectral pony as well. So 12 inches. Uh, his attack profile is in the middling range, but obviously you're not taking that guy for this, for that reason i mean he's he's okay it's not like he's bad or anything but just, that's not the reason you select this dude at the end of your movement phase you can remove this unit from the battlefield and set it up again on the battlefield more than one inches from all terrain features and objectives and more than nine inches from all enemy units uh and then once per battle round if your general issues a command this unit can issue the same command in the same phase without a command point being spent 
If it does so, that command must be received by a friendly night haunt unit. It's only once per battle round, but man, oh man, do I love that ability. Doubling up, being able to break every rule simultaneously, where I get to, like, double a command, ignore the fact that I can use the same one twice, uh, not spend a command point to do it. Different uh, place. Yeah, exactly. In a completely different area of the battlefield. No care about range. He's over here. The unit's over there. Let's party. I love this for so many stupid reasons, by the way. I say that yeah. because I actually think the real power of this is just like, okay, I'm going to throw out a situation to the two of you. How many times have you been in a situation in AOS 3.0 where you really wish you could have made two units run six? Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, more so with armies with charge, but like if my deep kin could run, could go six and then charge. Two yeah, like maybe. how often it is the case where you're just like, man, I really need these two units to be in this one place to threaten like, this objective. They, the the support hero coming up behind your front line that yeah. you want to keep with it up in twelve yeah. level or re you, you or re -roll, re roll charges being able to re roll yeah. two charges. I mean, I take yeah. my triumph universally. I almost I almost universally build lists light and take my triumph as the re roll charge triumph because I think it's actually the important one, especially with this army with wave of terror. Yeah. So like yes, absolutely. Like that's just that's just stacks on stacks. Yeah, because of the importance yeah. of landing your charges in Wave of Terror. So, yeah. like, and you know, sure, could he just double up on all out attack or discorporate, whatever? Discorporate. Is, sure. I, I, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. like all out attack uh, is not what you're going to spend this on. Discorporate is what you're going to use yeah. this on. I mean, it depends on what you're doing. If you've got somebody fighting last, sure. and you really your, your yeah. situation, right, with the giant, like you really got to bring him down, and you know he's yeah. stuck mm -hmm. fighting last. Like, hey, maybe we're not going to go discorporate. Let's double up on the AOA and just really try to no. smash this thing in the no. ground. No. You're just going to move your chain gas near so that everybody gets the plus one to hit without ever having to use AOA. Sure. Sure. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, like, like, I don't think, I don't think people understand just how command point efficient this army is with those chain gas. Yeah, yeah. Chain gas are real good. Because you're... Because you're not doing, and we'll talk to change of guess here, because you're almost never using, you're like, you don't use all-out defense, right? And you're almost never using all-out assault. You're almost never using Unleash Out for the army. Yeah, like it's like the, it's like the turtle. It's like that has a, you know, pony within 15, uh, plus one to hit and plus one to save bubble, and that just saves you right. a lot of all-out attacks and a lot of right. um, all-out defenses. It, it absolutely it. does. Your chain gas aren't going to be everywhere and they aren't always going to be alive, is what I'll say. But sure. Mm -hmm. um, but the point is, yes, Discorporate's another great one. You're not wrong. That one feels like the most mm -hmm. obvious one. Like, look, I don't think it's groundbreaking here to say doubling up on commands without spending additional command it's points good. is super yeah. good in AOS. Borrowing. Right now. Yeah. It's borrowing from the cabbage. Yeah. Nice. I mean... What I don't, I don't like if that if you don't understand why that is so stupidly good, right? I'm just like, then you haven't played a game yep. of AOS 3.0. That would be my statement, right? And again, at yep. 145, I'm completely willing to pay that for what I'm getting out of this dude. Yep. For hippity hoppity, command point doubly, perfectly competent in melee, got me. Yep, you could, yep. you could see yourself running too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, same. All right, so he's we're we're definitely a buyer on him. Okay, let's keep. And going. by the way, if you want to be super cheaty, you could run him with Nagash, and have Nagash general for you. <laughs> sure. So then, then you can when he issues the word save twice, yeah, and get plus three. Well, and but plus three to three different units, and so you could what you could actually then do with that is, um, you could like cast the seal of shy ish to go down to like a five and then he bumps it down to a four and then two others are going to be at five ups like it's just it's really good yep he's super good all right the lord executioner uh an absolutely gorgeous fig that i'm sad to i was sad to never see on the table maybe that will sometimes change here uh so he's five wounds but he's got a good attack profile um so he is yep. two ren two so again very with five attacks strong attack profile on the non-named 
uh, hero category. His special thing is that at the start of the combat phase, you can pick one enemy unit within three inches of this unit, not just yours, the. Yep. Good. Yep. Uh, and then subtract one from wound rolls for attacks made by that unit until the end of that phase. Quite a good debuff. Neg one to wound is always good. As mentioned, there is an artifact that can do this as well, although I would argue that having more instances of the potential to pass out neg one to wound around the army is not exactly ever bad. Um, this dude also yeah. packs his own built-in five-up ward, which, you know, also isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I like this guy. At, at 140, I like this guy. I don't think, again, he's my rating of him would be he doesn't make every lists, uh, not even close, but I could certainly see him in some lists. He's got an extremely utilitous debuff that works off turn, so you don't have to rely on your charge abilities only. It synergizes very well with all your charge debuffs. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, he's relatively punchy for what he does for his points. Again, you talk about, like, power per square inch. Like, this guy is on a truly tiny base. <laughs> For, yeah. for how hard he hits. He's a, on a 32, I believe. No, he's on a 40. He's on a 40. I think. Yeah, because yeah. he's got his floaty tendrils yeah. and yeah. that thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nico, what's your take yeah. on the Lord Executioner? Yeah, I'd say solid. As you say, it's a really good debuff. The problem is he's just competing with the two we just talked about. And he's like five points or ten points cheaper. So he's sure. just a little bit edged out sometimes. But yeah, if, you, if you're going down the hero hammer route, yeah, yeah, that's yep. all. Yep. I think he can be an like if you're in the hero hammer route where you're like, look, I'm gonna take six of these, I'm taking six heroes. I think he would I'm often taking six in many lists, Yeah, he would often in some lists be my be a choice in there. Very easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very easily. Okay. Cool. Good stuff. So another solid pick. Uh the Guardian of Souls. Tom, take us through the Guardian of Souls. Man, this dude has been a staple in my lists since forever right and i actually like that was the innovation going into adepticon is i started running two of this guy and basically he's as good as he's always been okay he uh he has a standard hero profile on five wounds and he's on the low end of the attack profile but again it's still three attacks dish and two damage a pop sure and so he like has the, he has the wizard stormcast profile he has the wizard stormcast profile like yes. and again so he, his no, big thing is he's gonna pass off he's gonna do two things and I think he does both of them really well. One is he gives out a plus one to wound bubble for melee weapons for night haunt units wholly within 12. And yep. which like that for like chain rafts, that's not a big deal because before, like I was using it with chain rafts and moving them from fours re you know, and giving them reroll once because their ability changed to be plus to wound because um, what are the other guys? Because uh, Herodons are plus one to wound. Like they're often going to be plus one to wound on their own. Like he, that plus one to wound is actually very limited on the units it's going to apply to. So most mm -hmm. of the time you're only going to use that with either Grim Ghast Reapers or all of your heroes. Yeah, or a bunch of heroes. And I think that that's where it shines yeah. is that he sits in the middle of your hero pack and he's like, let's go, right? With and giving, moving everybody to twos to wound. Yeah. Which is kind of a big deal. And then the other thing, obviously, is Spectral Lure. Um, one thing that you'll notice in this book, for anybody that was familiar with Night Haunt, is that a bunch of the model restore abilities have all evaporated. Like, we used to have a good, like, we used to have one on the Black Coach, which is a D3 models. That's gone. We used to have one as a command trait. That's, that was a D3 model, so that's gone. Um, there's only really two that have survived. One is the Spirit Torment, and the other is the spell off of Guardian of Souls. Um, it, it restores a D6 wounds worth of models. So it's not a D6 um, like models as as sure. uh, a lot of those other abilities were. But you also don't have a lot that's doing this anymore. Okay? Yeah. That's restoring models. His spell does. Um, and what's fascinating is it's a 24-inch range. Yep. And so he yep. doesn't have to be humping that unit to put those models back in that unit. It's a crazy range on that spell. That's right. wild. That that's right. And I mean, that's what it is now. Like, and I was running two of these guys. And before, like, they, on cast, they would restore 2d6 rasps instead of a d6. So, like, it was really good. But even a d6 is great. It really is. And again, because not a lot is doing this, um, I, I rate him really high. Nico, I know you don't rate him as high, right? They've been, like, nudging up the costs of, like, 
uh, monocast uh, wizards you know, consistently through version three. And this guy is kind of the tie caster price point, and the tie caster buff is incredible. Plus, one of you know, is also very good, it has to be said. But, you know, his spell, I would take him if I'm taking that tome artifact for the guaranteed life form. That is yeah. a solid. You can squeeze that in. It's great. But other than that, I think the problem is compared to the Spirit Torment. So he's if he gets his cast off, and it, it's a six is not bad, but D6 models back in every other turn, or half right. the turns in the game. Right. Spirit Torment, it does one thing, it does it brilliantly, which is bring back three models every end of combat phase. Guaranteed. Yeah, it could have been range, but other, other than that, guaranteed. Uh, and a really nice timing, because potentially it can add the models... Um, you know, and then they can score immediately. Um, I just prefer that for the reliability. I found with uh, the soul renders for for um, and Namati are excellent mm-hmm. when they're doing D three plus three, and the Spirit Torment is like a a cheaper version of that. You know, I think he's like nine, no, he's hundred fifteen, but he he is cheaper and just it's guaranteed, and it's both turns, so it's like six over about round versus D six. But yeah, as I say, if you if you get the life swarm guaranteed and the plus one wound is a nice nice combo. Yeah, I think I think I come down to between the middle of the two of you. <laughs> is my is my take? Like I like this dude, but I think he leans Tom more into your hero hammer type of, of, of build. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, but, I think but, that's where he performs best. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the point will is is well made. And I'm glad you stated it. That the plus one to wound often gets duplicated because of other abilities already existing on scroll with with your units. Um, I saw somebody say it's. I think uh, maybe Grand Alliance Death said he thought it was a non bow with uh, frightful touch or whatever. And I don't think that's true because only one in six year attacks auto wound. Why not also make more of your normal attacks that do you don't roll six to hit wound as well? I think it's supplementary, right? But it's still good. Well, it's supplementary on the attacks where you're not doing wave dice, right? Like, yeah, this yeah. auto six of the wound help with weight of dice. But right. when you have high quality attacks like Kurdos, every single one of them needs to land. Right. It's right. Like exactly. Soft nonbo or something. It's you know, it's not too. It's manageable. It's not the end of the world. Right. Yeah. One of them doesn't not, shut off the other. It's not like compared to like if you had like sixes to wound do mortal wounds that would and you lost that opportunity that would be more of a problem. Right. Right. And the walls are a big deal. So I think this guy is like up for consideration. I actually don't. You're you're absolutely right, Nico, about the average cost of casters drifting up. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Like we can all thank Slanesh for really breaking ground on this because they were the first one to promote all of their single casters to like 150 <laughs> points. Yeah. Um. So, but I do like this guy's buff, especially in certain lists. Mm-hmm. And you know, spectral lure. The good thing about it is that range. I agree with the variability yeah. of it. It is a cast that's hard to do sometimes, but man, that is just like that is a wild range to be able to restore models. So y- like, the fact that he's so what, flexible. What I found often was like I would like retreat out of combat, right? And then like one of the first things I would do is I would rally, and then I would hit with the spectral lure and like just begin like filling that unit back up. Mm. Um, and again, it's not the two D six, but again, a D six Grimgaff Reapers. I'll take that. He doesn't mean in the same turn, people. Just to shortcut, because the way you no. just described yeah, it, yeah, everybody yeah. was going to like oh. be like, "No, you, like you I were just about out. to invite yeah. some pushing up the glasses, going, um, actually, yeah. you were phased before the movement phase, Tom." Yeah, of course not. We yeah. know what you're I'm saying. saying on the next turn. Yes, I got you. Of course, I've done, that ex- I've done that exact kind of thing with with like you know five Reavers Survivor. You know, 30 block of Reavers, survive a charge from a cabbage. He kills 25 of them. The other five are out of combat. They rally immediately. They they walk away from him. They shoot him a bit. Then I do another rally. And then I do, you know, the soul renders bringing back D3 plus three models the next two turns. And then suddenly there's like 17 guys. They're full unit again. Yeah. Yep. It's, you know, those kind of things can be devastating. They don't quite wipe the unit. Yep. All right. Let's keep going. Let's talk Spirit of Torment and our non-hero... I'm going to call these guys Warlocks because they remind me of, like, Eldar Warlocks. <laughs> these, like, random two-wound buff dudes. Um, they're, my, they're my boys. This is this is my... This is my... The core of my, my strat on the from this last weekend. Yeah, so I like both of these, these guys. Uh. Um, 
So, Spirit of Torment first. Or Spirit Torment. I know it's not of, but I want to put the of in there so bad. Why is there not an of in that name? It drives me crazy. At any rate, this is what you were already describing, Nico, and this is, like, yep. super crazy good. At the end of the combat phase, you can pick one friendly night haunt summonable unit wholly within 12, so still a fairly generous bubble. Uh, you can either heal up to three wounds allocated to that unit, or if no wounds are allocated to it, uh, you can instead return a number of slain models that have a combined wound characteristic of three or less. Fantastic. Stops chip damage from ever being a thing against your army just by his existence. Um, okay, all your summonable units just become immune to nonsense chip damage. Um, yeah, it's honored. fascinating because you used to have to kill enemy models in order for this to trigger. Right. And, and now, now it's just, it just, it it's just a heal. It's an auto heal. Yeah. Yep. You can be miles away from the battle. Yeah. Techless absolutely hates hate this kind of thing. Like when he's doing his technado and then like bang, bang. Yes, he does. Bring me back, through back. Yep. Uh, yep. so I like this guy a lot. And again, his attack profile is fine because he has neg two, two damage. He only has three attacks, but it's, it's fine for what he is. Yep. I don't, but that neg two ren two inch range catches people out. I had a, my beast of Nurgle player came in with Sloppity and he was all excited and came in and hit my chain rafts and, and pinned him. And, uh, and the near beast died. And this guy was like stuck and unable to pile it. And he's like, okay, well, combat's over. And I'm like, not actually. And with my t neg two rend attacks, you know, like all three of them fully buffed up, just stripped the save right off and went, you know, six damage nice. straight to wards. Like twos and twos, baby. And then, yes, chain guests, who are obviously actually not a hero, but show up. Just, they they kind of like sneak into the pseudo hero section here, basically. Because they're like a utility non-hero buff unit, basically. And you pair uh, them. Like, they only work when they when you have a torment on the table, which is a real big distinction. Yes. So, uh, add one to hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by friendly Nighthawk units wholly within 12 of any friendly units with this ability. While a friendly spirit torment is on the battlefield. Not near him. You just gotta yeah, be somewhere. You just gotta exist. That's that's more generous than it used to be, right? Because it used to be, yeah. they had to be near each other. Within well. 12 of... Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah like, that's fascinating. That was a price, sorry. There was a price yeah. point where, um, you know, previously where people were thinking about spamming these as like an actually semi-reasonable shooting unit when it popped up. Um, well, they were 75 probably, probably points. Probably a bit too pricey now, but yeah, really good utility and a bit of, a bit of damage as well. And, you know, as we've said, like chipping a couple of models or uh, mo chipping a couple of wounds away with your model wounds apps and your candles and these uh, fifteen inch shots is can be really handy. Yep. Yeah, these guys are perfect to keep to be the the units that like get pulled for me. Like when I could uh, deploy in the underworld, like these almost always were deployed in the underworld because sure. there's no reason not to. You because you're going to pop them up nine inches out, which is where they need to be. Right. right, in order to spread their buffs. And then when you pop them up nine inches out, those 15 inch, they still get their shooting. Because the, your shooting attacks happen after your movement. And yeah. so, like, it's just, like, they get to do all their things. They get to buff, they get to shoot, and they just get to hang out, right? Um, yeah. I love, and these are the secret to the hero bubble, because these guys hang out, like, they'll zone, like, the back of your hero bubble or whatever, right? And so they still get... Uh, it's funny because these guys got worse, by the way, because they used to they used to do a number of attacks per model oh, equal to like all enemy units within three inches, Dumb. Uh, which was what I hear that. But I like with two of them at Adepticon, I did like 27 attacks against zombies. It was great. I understand. Um, I'm just saying I hate abilities. Uh, like that. They're so dumb. Oh, I know. We'll, we'll get to another example of one of those that still survived. Yeah. Um, but uh I mean, what I'll say is this: I like, I love these guys. I wouldn't go any, I wouldn't go home without at least one set of these chain gas. Yeah, I mean, the attacks got worse. The, the melee, theoretically, I guess. Right. Um, but the 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 thing you were taking them for, this buff got so much better because of not needing to chain the characters around. That's the trick. Right. 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 Um, well, in Reichnor's Condemned, they were pushing out a fifteen-inch reroll all hits bubble without having to chain. 
So yeah, like, sure. but like, I mean, that's like with right. North I'm not Denver, counting that because that was never going the best to of all ever. possible worlds. This right? literally the second that got published five minutes later, we were like, this is not going to stay. So like, it was never real. I'm glad you got to yeah. manipulate it and utilize it, but you know, okay. Yeah. It's great. It was a great weekend. Um, they're great. Uh, yeah. They're good stuff. And for, like four wounds on a four up six up is actually a lot harder to remove than you'd think. The last thing I want to say on these guys before we leave them is I want everybody to remember the ghast flails profile. <laughs> yeah. And and the number of a shooting attacks and the various the, the, the like the profile and number of these shooting attacks vis-a-vis the points because it's two of these dudes. So I'm getting four attacks on fours and threes neg 2 one damage for 95 points. Which yep. is like I would at a 15 inch range. 15 inch range. I just want us to lock that that profile in our heads. For later, yeah. for later, I won't yeah. spoil it, but let's just let's just all keep that up here for later, okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Great. No reason. Uh, the Tomb Banshee, uh, most improved player award right here. Uh, I love the Tomb Banshee. I love that they actually tried to make this ancient hero that you can buy for like eight dollars. I mean, this thing is so cheap if you could find it still in its little clam pack, right? Uh. So she has a little range attack that is whatever it is. It's fine. Her reason, the reason you take her, I love, by the way, she only has two attacks, by the way, Tom, she's like below the three attacks thing. Yeah, because I, she's, I don't count her. <laughs> she doesn't exist in my mind. Oh, I love this little hero. Okay. So what I, what I enjoy about her, she's is I'm, I'm, I'm I'll, I'll take lead on her. Cause I have something I really yeah. enjoy about her and something I don't enjoy about her. What I enjoy about her is, I think she has, again, we're stealing other people's ability. This is kind of how Total Eclipse uh, should yeah, have been. But it's against if one enemy, unit. Correct. At the end of your charge phase, you can pick one enemy unit within 12 inches of this unit and roll a die. Now, she didn't have to charge. It's just that's the trigger time. Uh-huh. right? Yeah. She just needs to be around Yeah. at the end of the charge phase. Your charge phase. Your but, charge yeah. phase, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but, well, this that lasts means- longer than just the resulting phase, but yes. Add one to the roll if the target is terrified. Cool. So if somebody else charged them within three inches, then you're doing this on a three up. So on a four up or a three up, if they're terrified, your opponent has to add one to the number of command points that are spent to issue a command to that enemy unit until your next hero phase. So that that thing actually sticks around potentially quite a while on that. If you get doubled, it would be nice. Yeah. Right. Now... My issue with her is I really like that ability. Like, I really do. I love the idea of bleeding out their their unit they want to buff. Okay? And making it very hard. Because, like, everything gets harder on that unit. Right? Mm -hmm. They want to redeploy that unit. I hope you're willing to spend two command points to do it. Right? Because, again, that, that unit didn't necessarily have to be in combat. Yeah. What imagine I don't like about her is... A, what's that, Nico? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Ma- imagine it's Manfred or something who's got like that hero phase command ability that he really wants to use. And- right. Everything gets more expensive for a long time. But my issue with her is 115 points is just slightly too expensive for mm. what she does. That's the issue. You'll never use this ability. If it was on a two-up with the plus one... Yeah, sure. If it started at three and went to two or something like that. Another yeah, yeah another little gripe is like the the wording should be like, you know, when a unit receives a command, uh, receives a command because they've said issue two instead of receives. Right. And then it should, when you use it, you spend one more. But you know, that's not a, everyone understands what it's getting at. But it's just unfortunate. If it was like all enemy units within twelve inches or oh, holy with it. I mean, that's so I strong. Then okay. you'd have to like jack her points way up or something like that. But it would be more reliable and usable. Like it's in worth this, a try. I agree. She has to be in she has to be in the pocket at the 12 inch mark yep. to utilize this. So sure. in threatening range, right? I understand. And that unit has to be the strategic unit that they're going to want to issue commands to, which may or may not be the case. I mean, I, that's why I moved it there, because I knew that was the one they're going to want to issue to. It's generally pretty obvious who they want to issue to. The units you're fighting. That's not like and a it hard fails 50% thing to of the time. And it fails 50% of the time. It fails 33% of the time often. But yes, like because you, you can often have them terrified at this point. It's not yeah, I just... Especially, 
It's definitely I'm like not. Put, I'm not spending right. 115 for that. I'm just not doing it. It's definitely a build where you take like Turdos and you take Alinda and you take maybe a couple of Tomb Banshees and you really lean into this command ability frustration right. side of things. But yeah, it's worth trying, I think. It, to me, I would love her at 95 points, maybe even 100. Uh, that's where I would really be in love with her. It does stack, interestingly. As in if you had two Tomb Banshees. It does, could... yes, because it's so... just add one. Yeah, so multiples of them screaming at a unit can make it just prohibitively expensive to actually use command points mm-hmm. on a unit at all. That is true. That is yeah, absolutely true. A lot more interesting. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't buy her for 75 points. Wow. No, I take that back. I would buy her for 75 if I have 75 left in my list and because you're, there are no other so units ridiculous. I can buy. It. Your, your spike is showing right now because she a 3-up had- roll is too hard for you. No, she's just not reliable. Like... That's the what, that's what and, I just said. You're just rephrasing up, what I just said. And she's taking up a one of your six euro slots. With, yeah, like I've you got are room competing. For her. I don't have room for her. That's yeah. fine. Is she a leader? Definitely. Just thinking I about said, that is a great Pro- question that I don't know. Is she actually taking up a I leader slot? She is sadly. Uh, Canarith is a leader. She probably is. That would have been a great trick if they had left leader. Like the uh yeah, she is a leader. Yes, yeah, yeah. she is. She is. Yeah. She is. Okay. If she was right. not, I would consider her at a hundred. We'd go back on board. Like any any cheap unit has that extra utility in this army of being an extra charge roll and an extra real right. charge the next turn. Um, but I would rather have four banshees on the table than her, and four banshees are sure. more born and they're one oh five. I understand. I I like her. I I I stan her. I like to okay. see these super old heroes get used. Let's talk about the last hero. Karn Wraith. Yes, this guy who... A good old boy. Who who still has the, I get a number of attacks equal to the number of models within three inches. Is so this the hero my, we need for the upcoming Horde meta, Tom? In my first build, mm-hmm. my very first list, he made it. As my general. <laughs> and do you know why? I'm ready. So that you there, lose less when he dies? There is a command trait mm. that gives oh. you re-roll all hits and wounds if the unit you are attacking on your general, if the unit you are attacking is not a death unit. Yeah, there is. Mm. And so this dude, this guy, running in on any like multi-model unit, right? Like sure. with his reach, would go in would be like could be on twos and twos re-roll all hits re-roll all wounds and get like 20 attack i think yeah it's potential but there's not enough in the meta the problem is there's not enough like multiple unit uh multi like multi-model stuff to utilize him thankfully it's quite an innocuous model compared to everything else so the possibility that your opponent forgets this is the case and puts 30 witch elves, you know, base to base next to each other to maximize their attacks, and then oh, whoops. But like, if if they are paying attention, then, then I say, imagine what this dude would do to a block of witch elves right. with that command trait. Sure. Like, he could almost single handedly lift that unit. If you were ambitious, you could give him arcane tome with, with uh, flame blade. <laughs> Exactly, flaming. I can't and then, believe you're standing the Karn Wraith when you are so negative on the two Banshee. It's ridiculous. Like yeah. the I Karn Wraith on a feel, thirty-two mil base, I believe. I'll I know. Play. I would feel the Karn Wraith in a heartbeat over the Banshee. Wow. But then you then you play Sons or Iron Jaws with pigs. And you're like, <laughs> right. sure. It's just like eh. sure, <laughs> and 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 that happens sometimes too. Yeah. I mean, what the I point is? Both strong. are super niche niche heroes. Sure, that's my point. I, um, and you're only I just want to take a back. moment to say oh, I'm I'm oh, super glad they tried to give both of these old, old, old heroes that have still just been hanging around forever, like some use. Like people could use these and not feel like a moron is what I is what I like. Yeah, we can yeah. argue about their overall efficacy, but I actually love that these old sculpts that they're you know these are cheap. They're cheap heroes. They're cheap models, and people have probably have them in their collections. And it's just cool that they like hey they can do something. That's great. I was looking for a reason to paint them. <laughs> it's great okay also 115 i think we said that yeah all right let's get into battle line boys here we go get into them units okay 
Uh, okay. Uh, so. Grim Ghast Reapers. Formerly the only unit from this army that people often liked <laughs> in, in a certain time period of the past. Yep. Uh, and now here they are. Basically, 8-inch move like everything in this army now. 4-up save. 2 attacks each at a 2-inch range. 4s, 3s, neg 1, 1 damage. And they get one more attack of their little scythes if there are 5 or more models in the target unit. So they go up to 3 attacks each. So on and so forth. Alright. 160 points for 10. Then they are battle line. I should have made that note as well, but they are battle line. Um, Tom, how you rating? How you rating GGRs? Uh, I did not rate them real high initially. Okay. Um, and Nico actually turned me around um, through some conversations on them. So I, um, and actually, I'm painting up twenty right now. Um, I think that they are the wonderful, like they are a wonderful switch unit. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, I think that they function both well, both as an anvil and a hammer. Um, and they're the only, they're one of the only units that I would rate as both of those things that they can serve based on whatever buffs they're carrying. Because one of the differences is like, unlike chain rafts, they're actually sitting on a four up save instead of a five. Sure. They're actually at a 10 bravery instead of an eight. Yep. Um, so they actually in large numbers do make a great anvil, Right. But because they're two inch reach, you're actually going to get them in range to do damage, unlike all the other 32 mil units that we're going to talk about. Yep. Um, and when they receive the buffs, like if they're in my buff window, right? The plus one to hit, plus one to wound passive, they're on threes and twos. That's pretty good. Like okay. they're going to confirm a whole lot of hits. So, you know, you're regularly going to throw out 40 attacks. Sometimes, you know, you're going to fight in two ranks, basically. Sure. And so if you run 20, you'll basically have a line of 10 honeycombed out and get all 20 in, 40 attacks. I don't expect to utilize the five models plus one to attack. Like, you're not regularly going to use that in this meta. That may change in yeah, the I'm new world. Yeah, I'm saying on these guys because if we, if we do, if, if the incentives actually switch and we see more horde-type action... Or larger yeah. units than these guys. These guys, the, the value are just, just so good. goes up. Yeah. Yep. Now, Nico, you're pretty hot on these boys. I am. I mean, for all the all the reasons Tom Tom's said, you know, the two inch reach is an absolute game changer. I've been seeing that with thralls recently. It's just incredible. Uh, they do receive like the minus one to be wounded and the the five up ward spells really well. They run in a they run nicely in a twenty. You probably wouldn't go for the thirties. It's so many points in one place. Yeah. Um, but obviously with retreat and charge, they are, you know, very able to re to reposition. Um yeah, I, I like them a lot. You know, Clubmate Ben Murphy is really keen on them at the South London Legion as well. Um yeah, they're a big winner for me. To be honest, they're they're really if you want a big hammer in this army, you're pretty much between them or the incarnate of Gur. Um, because to get one thing that you stick all that attack and everything else on to actually, you know, kill something in one go as opposed to with the MSU style. Right. Lots of things at the same time. These are the thing to go for, and obviously one damage means they're, they're, they're not being affected by um, you know, coalesced or uh, other night haunt armies with cruciators. So nice, really. Well, cool. they can uh, be terrified, so you cruciators will ne well, cruciators will never work against other night haunt. True, true. All right, so oh, just want to answer this real quick. Hey, re blue, uh, thank you. Uh, do I have a preferred Worm or 40k or AOS army that you love painting? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, Skaven and Slanesh would be the easy answer there. But I mean, I have 20 painted armies, so clearly I like a lot of armies. 21 now, technically, I guess, if you count the 40 armies. He really loves Slanesh, and if you don't believe him, all of his armies look like Slanesh at a distance because he uses the same colors. So, that's not Slanesh true. is the answer. That's not true. That is not true. If you walk into my room, teal, you not pink, and purple. 60%. Teal, <laughs> pink, and purple. That might 66% of your armies are Slanesh Nico colors. might be more accurate. Okay. Uh, chain rasps. So our, our 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 weedy battle line. Uh, Nico, let's flip the script here. Uh, one hundred and ten for ten, by the way. And they're you know two attacks, force force, no rend, one damage, and they get plus one to wound if they charge. Uh, what's your take on chain rasps on the raspy rasps? And obviously these guys are battle line as well. I think in in three of the sub factions, you're just taking these guys as ten man uh, chaff screens. In yep. the uh, Grieving Legion with the no retreat, I think you're taking a 30, a 20, 
of chain rasp and then 20 grim gas because you're wanting those as tagging units where you're going to charge into a chaff screen and then have one model 2.9 inches away from something behind the chaff screen or to the side of the chaff screen uh, and then they are stuck with no retreat you can potentially layer on defensive buffs as as needed on the chain rasps and they will just sort of grind away they don't synergize as tom mentioned with the guardian of souls which is probably one of the reasons i'm a little bit cool cooler on him the plus one of wound but because they're on 25 mils they will do some some work over time and with you know with multi-charging you could potentially get them to quasi ren 2 which suddenly just drastically improves what they'll what they'll do um but yeah outside of the grieving legion you're looking at like here is a cheap 10 man line of, of chaff I still like them in 20s like i still have a 20 block even in my emerald List because sure. they are a, it is a great tar pit and it'll be objective. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like if you can reliably put these on fives and fives, which you can, um, then like they, it's 20 wounds on fives and fives, man. That's that, that's plague bearers, right? Exactly. That's better than plague bearers. That's better than plague bearers now because uh, plague bearers are sixes and fives rendable um, and on 20 wounds. And so I like, I love, I still love a 20 pack of chain rafts as it is. Um, I, I, my entire offense was built on like these guys on threes and threes reroll, right? Yeah, or threes yeah. and threes reroll hits, threes reroll ones uh, to wound, uh, just, and just them being on threes and threes auto confirming on sixes now, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Um, makes- I like I, I like you know twenty of these guys is forty attacks. Yeah, that's pretty good. And the exploding. Good for them on the four up to wound normally because it, it's right, like yeah. effectively two hits for every six. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is they have a battle tactic for chomping on a mo- on a hero or a monster, which could be the five wound guy. So, yeah. so I, I like them is my point, and and I will still run them. Yeah, yeah. Like in all of my builds, I am still running chain rafts, and That's so right. they are super efficient, and not just as like a tenor, but as a twenty, because yeah. they are like if you don't remove them, they are a real problem. Because they will rally back up, you but, will spear or torment, like it, they will be an issue. And so I just, um, I'm still really high on chain rafts, even though 110, like that's a lot of points for for a for a lower tier battle line. But whatever. Yeah, I, what I think is interesting, and, and I'll kind of save my thoughts here as we go forward. But I actually, what I love is how you can mix the different battle line in this army. Like this army has a lot of really different, interesting battle line. And I actually think the way, like, the lists I've looked at have all mixed the different battle lines to different purposes. Like, I want to use a lot of them to different ends. Yep. And I think yep. that's actually a really, really, really good thing. Like, gosh, yep. I wish all armies were built like this, where you look at all the different battle line units and you go, yep, I can see a role for that. I want it to do this. I want to use one of those battle line, one of those battle line, one of those battle line, where you're not immediately just trying to, like, get this crap out of the way so I can get to the good units. Right. Like, like now, yeah, these guys have a function, and yeah, Grim yeah. Gas battle line, good function. These guys function. They fit a role. They're doing it. They're yep. doing it pretty well. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, Blade Geist Revenants. Revenant. Uh, so these are our boys um, who go battle line in the Blade Geist Revenant Crimson Doom, uh, and you know they're. The key with these guys is they are on 32s. And that's a challenge. With a one inch reach. With a one inch reach. Um, they have two attacks. Threes, threes, neg, one, one. So a slightly better base profile than Grim Guests, right? Because the three to hit versus the four to hit. And they get plus one attacks character to their attacks characteristic if they charged. So, so they um, have a more reliable, higher attack number. Uh, yeah, sure. Because of the retreat and charge, that's that's usually true. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. it depends. Again, who knows what the meta looks like? Like, if the meta suddenly flooded, you know, post Skaven, post Sylvaneth, post GHB, if the meta's flooded with big horde units, then it might be more consistent that you're getting that that bonus attack off turn, even than yeah. you just on your turn retreating and charging. But whatever, I don't want to get into it. They both have a plus one attack mechanic meta determinant as to which one is is actually valuable or more valuable yeah. or whatever right but the big challenge with these guys is obviously the uh the one inch reach on a 32 mil model 
which means either you have to fight in the very specific like magnet tray <laughs> honeycomb yep. honeycomb to That's get all of your attacks or you just got to uh, accept that like some dudes aren't fighting right yeah yeah and i like i for my last two events i've run heritons which are i've been running 10 models they're on run them in tens 32 mil bases one inch reach and the reality is is that like there are just some times where i couldn't get a whole unit in yeah and that's it's a very, very real possibility they're cheaper and they synergize better with uh the the touch exploding or sixes auto wound yeah um, yeah yeah at I, the end I, of the day if, go ahead nico i was just saying like i only see blade guys revisions being run in tens and probably only in in the scarlet but when they are in scarlet i think they're an excellent option because they're just doing very solid like three three to four model wounds for every 10 10 of the charges the ability to focus fire that and then have the um potential for, for extra uh, debuffs to save with the small number of models that actually are are hitting is is potentially quite savage so yeah i'm in, interested in them but strictly in that sort of faction agreed that is the place to use them yes because yep. then you yep. can like take a bunch of the of msu units multi-charge and hopefully just blow through something and where it's like well my yep. coherence doesn't matter because you're basically dead on the charge already i only need a few guys to fight you to clean up whatever's left yeah yep okay craven throne guard battle line of kurdos is your general no you got this wrong oh yeah in the army yeah he just has to be in the army oh is that kurdos right? shows up kurdos shows up oh, and these guys are like army. Army. thank you you're right yeah he's like i'm ready that I still would never include a unit. That but, is the most excited yeah. Tom will ever be about this unit. Yeah. That is exactly right. Thank that you. Exactly why right. didn't when I sent this out for review, why didn't you tell me that with that I had this error here? Because then but I wanted to tell you in front of two hundred and fifty people live. Oh, okay. That's cool. why. Well, that's good. Yes. <laughs> um, that's fine. I, I was mean, just reading I appreciate you uh all the hard work that I do for this show being be uh where you know that's great. Good uh, feedback. The real th th that's my flippant reason. The real reason is is I didn't read it. Got it. That also makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is the disappointing cross moves, right? I mean, can we say this any other way? They're fairly disappointing. They're like two thirty for for ten effectively. So like, whereas like Reavers are one hundred and seventy, even like Slanesh ones are a better value than this. I mean, Simon, Simon Weekly and, 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 and I, the South London Legion, have really tried to make these work. I think they do have this rally thing. So on five ups, they rally. And that is a lot better on a shooting unit because you're less likely to be unable to rally from being in combat. And in theory, you could deep strike them. You can you know, have a unit of 15. And it's actually quite hard to get rid of a 15, as we kind of discussed with Chain Rasp. Um, however, that's still so many points. Um, and the output is just weak. You know, one good thing about the output is that spiritual touch does work on it. So the sixes to hit will auto wound. Sure, but it's just not enough. And but none, none of your other the buffs work. work. Sorry. Yeah, none of your pluses to hit and wound. Yeah, none of the plus to hit, none of the plus. None to of wound. the bubbles work. No, re there are no rerolls, so they're just. Yeah, it's a real stretch at that price point. But you know that means potentially they can go down. But they really need a, like a fifteen inch range. They need. Something better than just ignore line of sight because that doesn't help very much at twelve. So I read there, there like obviously these guys came out in the box, right? And you read the ability: this unit can target enemy units with shooting attacks, even if the target is not visible to the attacking model. Like, okay, cool with my twelve inch range. I don't know what building is in the way that I'm actually shooting through, but that's fine. In addition, enemy units targeted by shooting attacks made by this unit do not receive the benefit of cover for those shooting attacks. All okay. right. Yeah, Nico, did you ever? When did you start playing Warhammer, Nico? Uh, when I was fifteen, probably. Okay, so what year was it? Like, I I'm not trying to get your age. I'm just trying uh, to get like, what edition did you start in? Ninety nine. Okay, so you were at the tail end of fifth edition, right? Yes. So it's in fifth classic. edition, Elves. Yeah, there was a unit in the Dogs of War called Lumpen Croups Fighting Cocks. Okay, they were little halfling archers. Yep. And I love those little guys, those little halfling archers. And Lumpen Croups had a they were they were a similar ish unit, you know, little little bow dudes. And they had an ability that made them immune to Waywatcher traps. Okay, at the time, Wood Elves 
could pick woods terrain, like a woods terrain on the board if they had mm-hmm. a unit of way watchers in their army and trap those woods. And if somebody else walked into it, then they took some some hits of a certain strength. Yeah, but but don't worry, lump and croups could go in those woods and be immune to the way watcher traps. And the constant oh, joke amongst our group was, how many points am I paying for that? I would like to give that ability back and save whatever <laughs> stupid points. Yeah. I don't care if it's one point per model. I I will take it. Okay. And all I can think of when I read these guys and see that I you get to ignore cover is like, how many points am I paying for that? I just I would just just make them cheaper. Yeah, I mean, I, I now let's refer back to the previous joke about chain ghasts, right? Ninety five points, twenty points cheaper. So out of these five guys, I get 10 attacks on fours and fours, neg one, one damage. Whereas out of the literal four chain guests, who are actually doing other things, by the way, or two chain guests, right? Who, who are, are doing buffing, other things, right. by the way, who are buffing a unit mm-hmm. in a good way. I'm also getting four attacks at fours, threes, neg two, uh, one damage. I think on I, average, they do more damage than these guys do. Like on the numbers. I haven't calculated that out with a six to auto wound, but it's competitive. I'll say that much. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I haven't calculated out with a six to auto wound. Yeah. Right. So my my point is is that like these guys are such a miss and it makes me sad. Because they're a cool idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a bunch that aren't built and aren't gonna be built. Yeah. Like just that range is too short, the attack is too weak, you know, I don't or or the points are too high. Something. Right, like there's something not right here. One of these things needs to move. Yes, it. This is what we call a bad scroll. Yes, mm-hmm. that's that's apart from right. the rally thing. The rally thing has potential, particularly if they were like ten, twenty. Hmm. Okay, so let's say that they rallied on oh, with four. new points. New points with like, new yeah. points. Yeah, so, I mean that's yeah, yeah that's, like yeah. So yes. If you change have, all of those other things, that's then the best sure. thing on the war scroll. Right. Yeah, they have a good ability in the rally thing. Unfortunately, yeah. it's attached to an otherwise bad war scroll. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. They compete with glaive wraith stalkers for the worst. Glaive wraith stalkers. Uh, so. Obviously, the reason that you might like Glaive Wraith Stalkers is that they do have a two damage base, which is, you know, pretty rare outside of the heroes in this army. Um, but they are a hundred. F- go- can just I just let me, stop let me finish you. the stats? They're one hundred five points for four models. Okay, and okay. the cool thing about them, look, I do want to say the cool thing about them because I don't totally hate That's these fine. guys. That's I do, but continue. I understand. I don't think they're good but they do have a neat ability. All right. Okay. The cool thing about them is that you basically pick a unit at the start of the game, the start of your first hero phase, as it were. And if this unit's on the battlefield, you can pick one enemy unit to be its prey. After this unit makes a move, if this unit finishes that move closer to its prey, which is very easy, because you can just pick whatever's in the back corner of their army effectively most times, right? And you don't need to even really move toward that thing. Like if you're moving like this, you're still closer, right? Then you get plus three to charge. And it's cool because they also have a built-in plus one to charge. So they have plus four to charge, which is cool. If I um, moved the, the wave of terror number, then I would agree. Yeah, oh, it, which oh. it does not. It's unmodified, obviously. <laughs> yes, it does no, not. No, so now it's just, it just doesn't do anything. Like, can can we skip Spirit Host and we'll come back to him because I really like him, but I want to I want to review this scroll immediately next to the Banshees. It's really okay, important sure. that we see that same pricing. Yeah, okay. right? No, yeah. that's fine. Same pricing. I, say, I try to find a combo with like uh, with Aurac, but unfortunately, it doesn't work. You want to move and then teleport, yeah. and you could maybe yeah. like and they don't get to do that. an objective, but it doesn't work timing wise. The start of movement phase. <laughs> So Sadly. let's skip over Spirit Host, and we'll we'll come right back to them and and yeah. consider Mirror More Banshees, okay? That's fine. Because yeah. Mirror More Here Banshees have the same profile: one wound for four models for one hundred five, eight move, ten bravery, four up save, right? Their profile alone mm-hmm. is two attacks, same fours and threes, neg two ren, two damage each. Yeah. So they get double the attacks, better rend. Yeah. Same stuff. Same points, same models. And instead of giving them the ability to close the gap, 
Ban the Mirmorn Banshees get probably one of the most powerful spell abilities in the game right now. Yep. Yep. Okay. And what this d bubble is is, um, and by the way, this wording has changed somewhat from when it got released in the box till it made this book, which is a fascinating change. It's more powerful now than it was in the box. So now it's you roll 2d6 each time an enemy wizard successfully casts a spell and is not about and chooses for the effect of the spell to apply to a unit wholly within 12 of this unit. Yep. Or when an endless spell finishes a move within six inches of this unit. If, you, if this unit has three or more models, you're going to add one to this roll. If your roll is greater than the casting value of that spell or endless spell, not the dice rolled. No, the casting yeah. value. But whatever the number is on the scroll. Then the spell is unbound before it has any effect, or the endless uh, spell is dispelled. Um, and so, what's interesting is that this spell, um, like this, gives you a second unbind against spells at the easier value, and all it has to do is it it has to affect one of your units wholly within twelve. It's uh, so not good. Even, not even your oh, unit. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not, it's not your unit. unit. You're right. Any unit. Yeah, right, they yeah. try to oh, like oh. you got banshees floating around a Lumineth unit, and they try to power of Hayish themselves. You can shut that right down. It's yeah, you will eat their power of Hayish. You'll eat their mystic shields. You'll eat their arcane bolts. Yep. Yeah, it probably needs a uh, an FAQ because like chooses for the spell to apply to. Like imagine like Teclas is doing his protection aura. Is that choosing to apply to? It's just kind of. Oh. There. This came up in our game because I ran four <laughs> banshees and the TO ruled in my favor. Okay. Um, and so like I, I got to like I rolled there's only two units, unfortunately, that was in the bubble at the time. But I got to roll up two bites. And if either bite would have hit uh yeah, yeah. succeeded, the whole spell would have been shut down. Yeah, because I'd be inclined to think that it's either gonna get errata to be like picks a picks a unit within 12. Well, it used to be pick and they changed it to this. Oh, well. Okay. They changed it to this from the pick a unit. <laughs> okay. hmm. um, okay. Yeah, and so it's a real, <laughs> like, and the question is, is like, let's say that a spell, like, is multi-target, right? That hits a bunch yeah, of different yeah. units. Are you rolling 12 times or however many units are yeah, in this? Yeah, like, NATO just would never work, basically. Yeah. Yeah, the techless spell would just literally shut down every time he tries to cast it. Oh, well, you are still rolling against a 10 now, with I, a 2-6 right, plus sure. 1, but sure. Yeah. I've missed yeah. those enemy units as well, which is really nice for like Mystic Shield. Yeah. So I I rate these guys really high, but I've struggled to fit them in lists regularly. See, this is everything. I, I I've totally come around on these banshees, Tom. You know I always hated this unit. You I were always it. hot on it, and they never did yeah. crap for you, but you kept liking them. But now but at now two I like the model. No, it's honestly their their offensive profile is perfectly good. Like it's it's good. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. it's bad. I'm saying it's yep. good. But I and, don't... Like, but that's not why I'm putting him in the army. Sure. That yeah, spell yeah, yeah. eater ability is so good. The utility on that's so wildly good. The fact... And, and it's what... what The penny dropped for me literally when I realized it could be on buff spells as well. Because yeah, all he, good spells yeah. right now in the meta are buff spells. Buff spells. Yeah. yeah. Like the right. Merc knob is crying about how much better this is than... Than yeah. He is. Go, right. yeah, and like, but I know you. I know that you're kind of Boys. like flippantly dismissing the offensive power of these guys. But I, I'm not I'm saying it's not guys. the reason they win me over. Right. I had That's four of them in my list this weekend. Well, they were still seventy five points then. Sure, they're one of five now. <laughs> um, but I had I, I had one unit of four in there, and in two different games. In one game, they lifted a Lord of Afflictions <laughs> because it's it's eight attacks. On with yeah, in yeah. the buffs in the buff circle, they're threes and twos. Sure. Yeah. Um, and neg two ren two damage a pop, and then uh, in another uh, they lifted the Namardi king. Yeah, I have those like final sort of 200, 210 points, and it's either like, do I take Kurdos? Do I take two units of these? Do I take a unit of these? And, and, I think an eight pack eight of these. In, I think an eight yeah. in. Um, I think an eight of these in uh, hunters is really interesting. Because it, it because it becomes it's your secondary wave it's your secondary like reactive hammer it sits in the back line buffs everybody because eight is a huge like a huge spread 
right? Mm -hmm. Fully within 12 of eight of these guys. You that sits behind the line and you, they come in and then it counter charges and just like, you know, again, eight of these is 16 attacks, right? Yeah. Um, that's a lot. No, it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely a good unit. Yeah. No, I mean, the look, the same weakness and Achilles heel that's always been there for this unit is still there for this unit. Sure. sure. Which is these are four wounds for 105 points. Yep, yep. Right. Which is why I like a, a double, a reinforced unit at at eight wounds, because it gives your your refill abilities uh, the the opportunity to actually catch the unit before yeah, sure. it explodes. Right. Uh. So, yeah. I mean, you're oh, you're absolutely I right to do the unit. comparison between the two, and you're right. This is the challenge. What I was going to go for was I love Great Glaive Wraith's little chargey ability. But when yeah. you compare, this is the story I was going to tell, the little utility of this compared to the utility of this. Yeah. Like, forget even the attacks exist, right? Right, um, right. I mean, obviously the attacks are better. But just forget those even exist. You look at the utility of the two things, you're getting four wounds for 105 points. Let's assume I'm getting it just for the utility. It's not even close. Right, right, right. That's the trick. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about everybody's favorite new battle line. Uh, a lot of people are going to get real frustrated assembling this mm -hmm. kit uh i can't wait to see all the people like oh, i picked up some yeah some spiritos how do you assemble these <laughs> uh yep. because these guys are real good now uh these guys have been a battle line choice like one of my units i've had a unit of these in basically every list i've written i love them i just love them um spirit host three wounds each they're elite cool beans neat i don't know that that matters at all in this case but sure why not uh, they make a bunch of attacks I don't really care about. I'm buying them completely for, for Drawn to War. Uh, which is, they, as I said, they are battle line, by the way. And they're 125 points for three. Before you allocate a wound or mortal wound to a friendly night haunt hero, uh, or instead of making a ward roll for a wound or mortal wound, that would be allocated to that hero. If any friendly units with this ability are within three inches of that hero... Uh, you can roll a die on a 3+, plus. that wound or mortal wound is allocated to a friendly unit with this ability instead of that hero and cannot be negated. Thank you for putting all the correct wording in here, by the yeah. by. Uh, making mm -hmm. it so they don't get their ward roll against it. I have no idea why the Fire Slayer's heroes are the one thing that cheats. Yeah. They shouldn't. Please strike that from the record. It's stupid. Um, this should. This is the correct way to write this ability. Good. Okay. Oof. So effectively, you just have. If you use this bodyguard, you have no ward save at all. Effectively, which means right. 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 straight onto the spirit host to the extent straight. you roll the three, which yep. is a good way to do it because it's a genuine sort of trade off. Yep. Yeah. And again, yeah. they're summonable. You can refill because they're at that magic number of three wounds. It actually makes it advantageous because you can do things like uh, many of the things that can drop stuff back in has a can drop either a whole model back or still hit the three that they need to drop them back or whatever. Um, I love these guys. I love that they can bodyguard for any of your heroes. This was, I think, Tom, one of the major requests of basically every Nighthawk player was give us some option mm -hmm. to make our heroes more survivable and certainly yep. giving them the equivalent of like nine-ish extra wounds on a three-up to transfer over is a way to do that. It's huge. It's so huge. Yep. Um, and my favorite point is that they're not like dedicated. Like it's not a dedicated red. Re right, right, right. So, like, what yeah. happens is, is this oh unit God. sits in the middle of my five heroes. <laughs> right. That all travel together as one big pack. Well, we should point out, if you've got two units, then you can start yeah. You passing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you leave, alternate. Leave them both on one wound each, because you allocate one wound at a time. So. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. again, just going down the battle line road, right, of, of like, having different battle line units to different purposes... Most of my yep. lists were like a unit of, of um, Grimgasts, a unit of Chain Rasps, a unit of these guys. And I'm pretty happy with my battle line and the three different roles that I'm doing here. Like all my battle line are doing something I want them to do. You missed the Hex Race for Mobility. That we're, was the other gonna, one that you just missed. We're going to get yeah. there. Yeah, we're going to get there. Don't worry. I love me some Hex Race too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so, they're they're wonderful. They're going to show up in almost every list. Yeah. Um, because, like, what do you love more than Olander? Olander, guard, you know, with a three-up ward save from Spirit Host, if you want. Sure. 
Uh, I agree with your assistant ref who said they're actually surprisingly decent too with the auto wounds on six and the ability to get effective rend from the charges. They actually can do a little bit of work, especially against like other enemy sort of chaff type stuff. They will swarm and kill. Okay. Um, Dread Scythe Herodons, uh, who are battle line in the Quicksilver Dead. There we go. I had to think of the, their yep. proper name. Uh, did they call them the Quicksilver Dead as a reference to the Quick and the Dead? Is that what that is? I don't know. I don't, I don't know either. I think they're trying to explain why the Dread Scythe Herodons have weapons for hands. Oh. And so they're made out of metal. Does that make sense? Because the Dread, like the Quicksilver, they're all yeah, metal. Yeah, sure. They, they have little, yeah, because they have uh, T2... Robert yeah. Patrick Terminator yeah, exactly. liquid metal Terminator yeah. hands. Yeah. I think that I think that that's I think that that's where it came from. It was so funny. I had these there this weekend, like out of unit ten. And everybody's like, what is that unit? <laughs> <laughs> these no like most people who've even who've seen Night Haunt have never seen Dread Scythe on the table. Sure. Ever. Um, fun um, fact, this was the last unit review. Do you remember this was the last unit revealed for Night Haunt mm-hmm. during uh, the launch of AOS two? Like this was the last unit we saw. So most people didn't even really notice it in the initial launch either. Yeah, yeah, and they were not good. Um, no. It's interesting. I I have real mixed feelings about these. I I was really high on them initially, and I have cooled on them pretty significantly. Okay. Um, Nico, do you want to talk about them? Yeah, sure. I mean, I had a similar trajectory as, and I went out and immediately bought fifty of them when I saw the no ward thing in uh, in that sub faction. I I do think. You're probably taking no more than a minimum, minimum unit of 10 in any other sub faction, maybe just for sort of utility. And they got another one of these minus one to wound buffs. And one of the reasons I like them was that that debuff affects the enemy units and therefore it benefits the incarnate of Gur, who is in most of my lists. So that was nice. Um, they are efficient in terms of the exploding sixes. Uh, and they have a nice sort of self. Well, they don't have exploding sixes anymore. You're saying they auto confirming sixes, right? All right. Auto winning. Yeah, yeah. Auto winning sixes. Yeah. Sorry. Because effectively, uh, they're getting you're getting the math of an exploding six out of it when they're four up four. Sure. Sure. But yeah. like, un- unlike the the blade guys revenants, they're just not efficient attacking in in MSU because they're not you know, the blade guys are doing those nice three more wins for every ten, whereas these guys are just relying on their attacks of like the champ. And then a couple of guys you can squeeze into the the space you have available, while the others are sort of trying to do the same next to them, relying on hitting those uh, you know eights and tens and whatever for the wave of terror debuffs. Um, so they are a, a less efficient way to do damage than uh, the um, than that, and a less efficient way to do damage than uh, hex race that will come on to. So, other than the fact that they that the meta currently is very high on war saves, and it's Nighthorn and Doc are both going to add to that, um, they are not great. So, give it time, and if the meta changes, you know, back to like armor, you know, based on armor say or based on you know, volume of models, they will sort of fall away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I'll say is this: their murderous bloodlust will trigger. All, will almost always be on you know like you have enough ways to do like mortals on charge Splash and stuff like that in this army yes. Yes. yes yeah or yeah. do like or right nor burning a candle or whatever yeah. right like yeah. there are tons of ways to trigger so you really need to look at this and just consider them they're on threes and threes yeah yeah okay it's 40 attacks out of 10 models on threes and threes which is mm-hmm. good weight of dice is a good thing yeah right but they could be chain rats or grim rats. Grim rats, right? Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, like, right. chain rats also get forty attacks on threes and threes. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think that I think I'm in the same place as all of you on these. Like, I, I where I don't know what to think about them fully because they seem so dependent on what you're fighting and mm-hmm. you know being in quicksilver and what's the armor profile right. of your enemy right. look like and did you charge and get the neg ones to save or multiple neg ones to save and like there's just so many variables that could make them explosively good or just total garbage basically yep. no i agree i agree with that completely and that's the challenge that i ran into in, in list building is that i started heavy in quicksilver and then i began to like adjust and then i migrated to emerald and by migrating to emerald they lost value there and originally i still had them as my counter attacking unit like my counter punch sure. because they still serve that function really well 
But then I began, I was like, but would I rather have like spend the extra 50 points and have eight Banshees? Well, yeah, any day of the week, I'd rather have, you know, even though it's only 18 or it's only um, 16 attacks or 17 or 16 attacks rather than 40, like the the value of those Banshee attacks are like way higher plus the utility of the unit. And so I just like, I just struggled with this unit and to the point where like I, Vince, I had asked you to get some feedback on a list. And I ended up just trading this unit for my uh, hex rates. Got it. Uh, the, the Which unit I, I mean, need. yeah, we're going to come to it in a second. Hex hexes are coming yeah. up soon. Um, yeah. I mean, let me say this: I would just love one time to charge a unit of plague bearers with a good unit of of Herodans and mm -hmm. uh, and watch what happens there. Because boy, you, would that you want to do plague bearers? I want to do uh, fire. I want to do hearth garbage oh, Sure. Okay. Just yeah, yeah. lift up. Just pick them up. I, I would accept Fine. either because I hate on. both of those units. Yeah, just just killing them out uh, would be great. Okay, yeah. the black coach. I want to keep moving because we got we're 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 deep Pass. into this now. I want to make sure. Um, Pass. Is anybody going to defend the new black coach at three hundred and thirty five points? Is what he is now. Too much. Okay, so here's <laughs> the deal. One, like. It's got to kill. Here's let's the, let's talk about the scroll a little, just real quick. Okay. Yep. It has to. It doesn't just power up on its own. Like you don't just roll dice yep. at it anymore. Yep. It has to kill things to power up. If yep. it does power up to five, it yep. gains a four up ward instead of a five up ward because it does. And it only powers up when enemy models die. Yes, correct. Okay. Each time an enemy model is slain or flees within twelve inches of this unit, it powers up. Yes. Yep. It doesn't have to directly kill them. Other things could, they yeah. could be incidentally certainly. killed by other certainly. things. But yes. Certainly, certainly. Okay. If it, so if it gets to five, if it gets this little power counter to five, it goes from a five up ward to a four up ward. Yep. And if the value is six, you can choose to go bam and shoot with it. Um, and on a two up, you do 3d3 mortal wounds. Okay. Um, it does, as I said, it does have this built in uh, five up ward. And it does, you know, some impact hit mortal wounds, right? And uh, you, you, instead of picking this unit to make a normal move or retreat, you can say it will travel the Underworlds to a new location if you do so remove it from the battlefield and set it up again more than nine inches away. It has its own built-in teleport. Okay? All right. Now, is this thing... How do I want to say this? Is it just that it's too expensive or is there value here? Like, could this have a price point where you'd be a buyer? Nico, yeah, 200 points. That's way lower than 200. I think is necessary. But go ahead, Nico, you, what were you saying? I would say like 290 maybe. I think the problem is like, it's pretty much the same price as a Linda. So I'm going to take Linda over this or I'm going to add on another 70 and actually get the monster keyword while we're staying in this current meta. And then I got monsters takeover and right. all the other bits from that. You know, and it's not a hero either, so you, you know, can't turn it in. Uh, you can't turn it into a monster. You can't, uh, you know, give it artifacts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The impact hits are pathetic considering the size of the model. Like that's just grim. Like pick one unit, not even every unit within. Right. Within I mean, hex rates do the same. Hex rates do yeah. the same damage on impact. Yeah, um, and the, the 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 laser gun is. Is is good, but it's just too expensive for me. I'm afraid. It's let you know, me it's ask. Improved war scroll, but the points went up by even more. Let me ask this: What is this unit doing in this army? I mean, I, are you asking Sorry. what they intended it to do, or what it's actually doing? What it's, is actually it's, doing on this war scroll? They intended weird... it to be a distraction carnifex. Go ahead, Nico. I was say it's like a weird grab bag because it's kind of a tank with like effectively 18 wounds and it's got the laser cannon that powers up but, it but it's not 18 damage. wounds it has it has to be at a five up power mm. oh sorry and yes. so there sorry. will be some matchups where this thing never oh. powers up no 18 yeah. wounds is on the five up it's always got a five oh, up is it? oh yeah. sorry yeah that that's the right. math yeah. 18 wounds is that's the it's correct five, math five for a five up ward yeah because you would negate so. a third of the wounds dealt to you Okay. And then take twelve. Yeah, That's so how five of wards work. It would have twenty-four effective wounds if it was at a four up all the time. Okay, sure. You sure. double the like wounds a, for a four up save. Yeah, 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 yeah. A weird mobile anvil with this laser cannon bolted on and some really bad impact hits. 
It doesn't have any synergy for any other units near it. Oh, and it can teleport, but it's it's a grab bag to me. So when I used to run my coach before, it did two things, two very unique things in this army. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first is it restored a D3 models nearby. Sure. Yes. Okay. It does not do and it was a models. So I was actually putting like hex race, whole hex race, or yeah, yeah, spirit yeah. host model okay. back. Yeah. So that was the first thing that it did. The second thing was it had extreme mobility. Yep. Because what it did was it was a base 14 inch move. Say, My pendant, yeah. the pendant of Fell Wind gave it plus three. So it had a 17 inch base move when I would move it. Mm. And it had run and charge after yeah, yeah. power level two and retreat and charge after power level four. So like and 20 so, plus the charge, potentially. Right. And so what I could do is I would jump this across the table 23 inches and charge something and stick mm -hmm. it, like jam it down somebody's throat when they had zoned out the area. Like so even if they had zoned out the area, I could get it in there and just like put it in the middle of the back of their line and pick out a target. And I sixes to hit on like 15 attacks previously mortaled. Yeah. Right. And so like when it came in, I could kill a five wound hero. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, like, so it did those things. It doesn't do any of those things anymore. Mm. Yeah. And if I'm taught, like, if I want mobility, hex wraiths do it better. Yeah. Like if I want a laser, Olander does the laser better. Oh, for right. the same cost. Yeah. And Olander's a hero. And she, and, and, and. Better, better tank, potentially, as well. Yeah. She almost has the same movement as the coach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just don't, like, I see this, and it, it makes me weep, truly. Mm. Because Such this, because this model, like, very few times in my life have I painted a model in such a way that, like, it stops people when they walk by the table to stop and look at my coach. Inevitably, people will stop and like oogle my model because of just how beautiful it is. And you put and, it up flying high, haven't you? And I have it flying high like over a mausoleum and like, mm. and it just like, it was like, it's truly the definition of a centerpiece. Yeah. And that, and that coach will not come off my shelf anymore. Yeah, my okay. So here's my statement on this. I think actually what's killing this model, I, I agree it's slightly too many points. I I think you're crazy at 200, but I mean it. it sh sh but Nico's probably in the more right area. But like the rules problem this thing has is it should have never lost run and charge. If they hmm. had just kept it with run and charge, I could have handled the movement reduction as it still could have got somewhere valid. Okay. But yeah. the problem is, at 10 inches, it's just not going far enough to do what you need to do vis-a-vis -vis yeah. the other movement options you have in this book. Yeah. yeah. And and yes, it can teleport, but that's not an effective, you know, replacement for being able to move when people can zone you out and right. board control and stuff like that. Yeah. That's the issue. Because no. oh, the just... teleports, like, against a good opponent, uh, uh, you will never teleport into their backfield, ever. Right, absolutely. And and the fact that it's so... I, I actually agree with Assistant Ref's point that its base is so big that it can often be hard to even retreat and charge. Right, because it's be hard to get to right. a place where you're just legitimately three inches away from everybody else because it's on the the Imperial Knight base. Yeah. Yeah. One of the yeah, few so models I just, that's, that's there. I, and I, then again, I would rather I just, ally in a Mortis engine. Yeah, people like yeah, To I mean, get my little yeah, 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 yeah. attack. Seventy yeah. seventy four points for the incarnate, and he's giving you you know reroll, charge roll, buffs. He's giving you spam uh, or attack on your MSU, giving you yeah. no retreat to go with the no retreat sub faction, and he's a monster. So these monsters take. I mean, this guy black coach to be fair does unlock a battle tactic, but so does the you know having a right. monster. I just so. I like it. It pains me because of just mm. how bad it is for like how it's not doing so many things that it, it could be doing or should be doing. And the reality is, is that there are multiple games that I played this weekend where the coach would have never turned on, ever. Yeah, sure. Oh, absolutely. Like, in the current meta, it's a real tough sell because you right. have, like, it just it's right. never like, going to power up. Against the Chaos Beat, like, against my uh, Nurgle, uh, Beast of Nurgle army that I played, it never would have powered up. 
Right. Is like just that there weren't enough beasts kind of like the way the battle played, like there were just never enough beasts for it to actually turn on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I, I against stand Sons of Behemoth, it'll sure. never turn on. Look, the Mortis engine is going to give you similar shooting power, like mortal wound projection power as the little <laughs> laser gun for half the cost yeah. almost. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Because this thing yeah. doesn't actually go slam into people and slam jam bam like it used to. If it had no. run in charge and a higher move, I could see the argument. Yeah. Because then it would be uh, playing in a different space. It compares unfavorably to pterodons, sadly. Uh, oof. All right, yeah. let's keep moving. Uh, is there anything we'll say about the Briar Queen? Is this? I didn't even read this. I never read under um, advance. So here, so I'll here? say this. Uh, I looked at it right because, like, I'm, uh -huh. I get one for free for Midwest Meltdown. So, like, I'm painting it. I'm trying to figure out like where it fits. Her spell is nice. Uh, pick a point, eighteen inches. Um, uh, roll two d six for each enemy within six inches of that point. Right. So this is another six inch yeah. bubble. Right. If yeah. you roll over their movement. Uh, or okay. you roll a double, you do one mortal wound, and it halves their move. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but it's 280 points. But here's the interesting thing. The Thorns of the Briar Queen, the unit that comes with this, is six chain rasps, but they're two wound models, and they're three attack models. Yeah, they're just better. They're much better chain rasps. She has the elite chain they're rasps. actually... Right, so it's actually a really interesting chain rasp unit because you're, the the unit throws out eighteen attacks sure. out of a unit of six models, and so like it's not terrible, but you are paying a full price for a full chain rasp unit and a full wizard is basically yeah. what you're paying the price for. Yep. Okay. So that's what I would say. So it's not good, but it's like appropriately priced. As much as people hate me to say that, given how they buffed everything else up. Okay, that's fair. All right, let's get on to Hex Wraiths. Uh, yeah. I won't say we saved the best for last, but we saved a good one for last, that's for sure, of the units. Yeah. Uh, Hex Wraiths, 12-inch move, two wounds. Of course, they're pony ponies, because they ride ghost ponies. Uh, and two attacks each, threes, threes, neg one, one damage. Great. Fantastic. Uh, and then I'm going to read the second ability first, actually. Sure, sure. <laughs> After this unit makes a charge move, you can pick one enemy within one inch and roll a die. And if you, on a two plus, they do D3 mortal wounds. Basically the same thing the Black Coach does. So they have impact hits on every unit. Yep. Uh, they're 160 for five, by the way, as it says on the screen. But then the real reason you take them, and it did like, all well, that's a fine profile, by the way. I don't have any problem with any of that. These guys are battle line as well. And the, the thing that I absolutely love, Phantasmal Advance. Like, I don't know how this rule actually got printed because this rule is crazy, man. At the start of your movement phase, you can say this unit will perform a phantasmal advance. If you do so, double this unit's move characteristic until the end of that phase, but they cannot charge. So these dudes can just go 24 inches straight up. No, no, no. They can go 30 inches straight up. Sure. Because there's nothing saying you can't charge. This isn't saying that they you only can only do a normal move. Run. Right, run. Yeah, like that's what I meant. Sorry. Yes, they can. Uh, they can trigger a six. Sorry, they can do a six auto run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and jump to thirty. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying it's a. It's like so good. <laughs> yeah. Just be again the difference between teleport versus raw movement, and the fact that then by adding these guys in, and depending on your hero structure, you can have both abilities working yeah. in tandem, where your entire yeah. army. Tom, you know I'm addicted to mobility. Yeah. Homie. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's it's how we kept Cameron's uh Cameron's uh uh Maw Crusher out of the entire game is we just pivoted. Just pivot. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And so right. being able to take your between the earlier to, like that's actually the build I like, by the way. Just so we're getting on to like sort of my we're not gonna do lists tonight. We will do a list show in the future, don't worry. Um sure. but like getting on to a a sort of concept I like. Um, it's, I love when you can literally just reposition your whole army. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Every round. I mean, this yeah. is what I built my whole cities of, of, of Sigma army. I played around, right. It was just right. like, everything right. can You're just reposition and, yeah. and spin and pivot around. And the, my hero collection focuses on like all and the dread blade and stuff like that. So I can be pip, so I can be tele te teleporting and double teleporting, teleporting and reposition, yeah. reposition, and then hex wraith to just be like, Zhoo! 
way over here, wherever I want to be, right? So, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm hearing Vince. Vince, I'm hearing a lot of list building and a yeah, lot of like what sure. my night haunt. Does this mean you're making night haunt? It are we not. doing double night haunt this fall? We are not. No, absolutely not. Are you sure? I'm, I'm, sure. I'm hearing a lot of night haunt. You are, but no. Um, I just, I mean, every time we, when, when you get a book, I do make lists with it because that's how you be informed on what you can actually do, right? It's good to actually right, sit right. down and try to build lists. Yeah. But no, you're a friend of me. <laughs> but no, I'm not getting talked into Ghosty Boys, Tom. Sorry. Just not my army. Are you sure? Because I'm we sure. could do double Night Haunt. You could do all the horsies in the world. Stop it. It's not happening. Okay. <laughs> Imagine Nico, third, uh, 24 inch move for everything. Yeah, I got it. Nico, what about anything else we missed about Hex Wraiths? Yeah, so they can basically do a very similar build to the, um, the Blade Ice Revenants in Scarlet, where you're, where you're relying on MSU uh, retreat and charging and doing the Mortal Wounds. It's basically a trade between speed versus a bit more damage for the, for the uh, Blade Geist Revenants. Uh, Simon Weekly at the club and uh, Arthur are extremely excited about Hex Ray spam and, as you say, the, the ability to move block and just general utility, go and go and score Savage Spearhead or whatever whatever you want to do with that 24, 30-inch move is incredible. Oh, yeah. I think they used to have two-inch melee reach on the side, which they've lost, which is a shame. But, um, yeah, otherwise, you know, very solid profile. Cab bases can be a bit annoying at times, but... Uh, yeah, it's the it's a really tempting option. So you got all those, you've got you know very solid choice between. You know, do you want to spam hex, spam hex rays? Do you want to spam uh, you know, bodies? Do you want to spam uh, Blade Guys Revenants or or Harridans? And I think they're all they're all strong. I think Harridans is probably the it's definitely the least interesting and probably the the weakest because it's matchup dependent on ignoring the ward saves. But right. all of those, you know, if you like the models or what have you, you know, all of those sort of builds are are viable. Yep. Yep. They're great. They're super great. So yeah. yeah. Again, glad to see them still uh, old probably the like uh you know, very old so one models. of the oldest sculpts. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say well I'm trying to think if the Tomb Banshee and Karn Wraith are older, which would be the other two in competition with these. Yeah. But still very viable. Yeah. They probably um, all dropped at the same time for vampire guns. I'd have to. I'd, I'd have to go back and look at. We need. We need hooves. We need hooves of doom in here to tell us when there's the year these models were released. Yep. At any rate, uh, Grand Alliance Death says I also endless. really like them as a max sized anvil. Uh, he said discorporate and a cruciator in the middle. Uh, sure, absolutely. Okay, oh. uh, endless spells. There are three of them. I don't like any of them except the Terminexus. Am I wrong? Wow, Tom? really? Yeah. No, like, it's funny. Like, I've looked at it, and I actually like the damage of the other two. Okay. Like, I really do. Um, the Shyish Reaper, because yeah. it can pivot, like, it can spin, yeah, it can, so it's it automatically going to gonna catch. Yeah. Right, it's already it's automatically going to catch everything around it. So anything yeah. it's next to when it moves, it will, it will hit. Um, and you roll two dice for each unit it passes across. Sure. Right, and you add one if the unit's terrified. Which, if you're stuck in melee, like you're terrified, right? We've talked about this. Sure. Um, on if you roll uh, equal to or greater than the unit's save characteristic, which let's let's just be clear, there are tons and tons and tons of low save, like three up save in the game now. Sure. And you're getting two dice per unit. Every dice dice plus one is most of the time what it's going to be is a D3 mortals. Okay. And so you can regularly do two D3 mortals per unit that gets touched by this. Okay. I mean, I don't disagree with anything you just said. But the problem yeah. is, I'm not sure that low save is going to stay the case. Number one. Maybe not. My, Maybe not. my downside is the, is the threat range of, you know, holy within six. So then I'm and there eight. we go. That's yeah. it. That's what kills it for me. Like, the reason I like Terminexus... And yeah. I don't like yeah. the Reaper or the Vault. Right. Is because Terminexus still has a decent reach to it. Yeah. Not as good as it used to be, but still good. I just hate endless spells that people can see coming a mile away, or I have to wait until mm. late in the game when we're up in the mix yeah. to cast. That's but the problem. You will, you, the difference is, is that you will have Reichnor that's in the mix. And that's one of the or differences, is that Reichnor will, will almost always be in the mix. 
Sure, but I want him to cast Terminexus. <laughs> Sure. Like that's sure. the problem. No, or, yeah. or Life Swarm, or Umbra, or, or yeah, Amazon. or 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 it, right, these, like right, yeah, they're all more expensive than Life Swarm, and that's a, yeah. You know, when you're off and running, you know, one I when Life Swarm can either bring back the one way models guaranteed, or it can heal your heroes. It's just yeah. massive utility for the army. Uh, so it's tough. So let me affirm though, like the other, and I like the other one too that does a bomb. Like I think that against some armies will be really effective, but in general, I'm only going to buy one damaging. Endless, endless spell. spell and that's the problem and i'm Terminax gonna buy terminax <laughs> right yeah. and you know the funny thing is is that for the first time ever with terminax when i was like thinking about my moves and like how i position my army and like in this new book and how it changed with the old one terminax was was basically exclusively an offensive tool that i would chuck forward mm -hmm. okay What's funny is that in this new world of Hero Hammer, where I'm going to have like a, like a, a bucket of, of, of little heroes. killer heroes, you can also just become a healing thing. Yes, even more reason right. why I like it hits Nexus. all of them because right. it's not like, like you needed to make that decision at list building. Right, right. On right. the fly, you can just flip it from damage to healing. Yeah. Correct. It's not even when you cast it. It's just every time you're just this is what it's doing so, now. You know what? You know what's better than Life Swarm that heals a model or a unit for D three. Something that heals all units within six <laughs> inches of D3. It can't and, restore models, but... You can't restore models. can, can, restore models, can but do, you, like, or was even six to a, to a single unit in one turn, which could be huge on, like, a Linda. Sure, certainly, certainly. But, it's like, fun. being able to, like, push your hero thing in, engage, and then have the Terminexus off the back of your bases, catching only your heroes and not theirs, like, that's a very real possibility when you draw. Oh, yeah. If and, they don't have... They don't have shooting, that's really quite terrifying. Or like super hammers that will just one shot something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because it'll it would if you don't get if they don't get rid of it, it will tick for a D three healing yeah, yeah. every hero phase. Yeah. Yep. So there we go. That's it. Good stuff. We got to the end there, gentlemen. Uh so Storm overall, Nexus, still really good. Still really good. Uh turns out the difference between twelve inches and six inches is a big deal. So uh Gentlemen, Nico, thank you for staying up so late. I really appreciate it. I know it's late there. For all of you who are out there, if you haven't already hit like, hey, why don't you do so? Uh, especially if you like this new Nighthawk book. This is another tremendous success for me. That's my final final statement. Uh, 3.0 tomes, especially after the initial two, where we had a little bit of rockiness in the initial two for obvious yep. reasons. I, it's just been strength to strength to strength since then. I couldn't be more excited. These two just continue the winning. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about Doc next week. Tune in, come back next week for Daughters of Cain. But spoilers, I really love that book too. Still um, really good. And so, you know, I just think this is an absolute win. I love seeing the ghosts become a viable, multi-path, interesting army with lots of different list building potential where people can use a lot of the models that they love and not be a dum-dum. Like, oops, oops, sorry, you built it wrong because you happen to love these models. I hate that. Right. And right, now right. there's so much in this army you can use and have success. I just think that's an absolute, absolute win. Yeah, it's, it's even better than Nurgle, because like, Nurgle got the Blight Kings who are kind of the sad cousins of the rest of the, the battle line options. Well, I think Blight Kings are just all, biding their time all, until yeah, the hashtag... Yeah, they were great last out. edition. So, you know, they were great last edition, so I'm sure they'll be, they'll be fine in the future. Yeah. But anyways, there we go. So thank you, everyone. If you haven't already hit like, hit like, subscribe... <laughs> We're here every week, obviously. Uh, don't forget, we do have a, a Patreon focused on the hobby. So if you want to take your next step in your hobby journey, um, that that is focused on review and feedback and has a great Discord community around it. Uh, but hit all those things. Don't forget, there's also merch down there. There's a merch link down there. This is the shilling part of the show. Welcome to the shilling. Uh, you can hit that merch. Uh, you can buy your Team Tyler or Team Tom merch to show who you support. Uh, don't forget... But Nico, thank you so much for coming here, buddy. We really appreciate it. Be really fun. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And for all of you out there, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. As always, we'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs>